Hey everyone, welcome to Game Face, episode 193 on Sifted Games at Sifted.net. I'm Shane Satterfield. And I'm Matt Kyle. And you have just found the most informative gaming podcast in the world. In the world. In the world. Hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. I mostly did. I had a blast on Thanksgiving, Mm -hmm. but then I paid for it for the next, like, two days. I drank too much. I felt terrible. I I can't do it anymore. I think part of the problem is I just don't drink. Mm -hmm. I started thinking back. I had not drank before Thanksgiving for two months, and then before that, two more months at a fantasy draft. So I've drank three times in the last, like, four months, and I think I just my tolerance is not what it used to be. Yeah, I, I paid for it. I didn't drink anything, although I did have two dinners on Thanksgiving. Oh, that's great. So. It, was, it was awesome. I had a great day, great people, great food, great fun. I hope you guys all say the same. I do want to say that I am very, very thankful for each and every one of you guys, all our patrons, people who watch on YouTube, however you get to us. Thank mm-hmm. you. We really appreciate it. Every little thing that you do helps. Just watching on YouTube helps. That's another view on our YouTube channel that helps it reach other people. Uh, so we're very, very thankful for you guys. Without you, none of this is, is possible. So thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, on Saturday, we, I, we actually had a big uh, movie night, and we watched the Star Wars trilogy. The which ori- one? The original. The original. The, what else do you mean? When yeah, you I know, I know. <laughs> I would have said the prequel trilogy. We already did that. <laughs> Uh, but it was the original despecialized uh, 4K scans of original 35 millimeter, like exactly how they were in theaters. Um, no, no additions, no CG. Wow, so it, was, uh, it was a good time. Yeah, sounds like it. I hadn't uh, watched. I hadn't watched those movies. Actually, sat down and watched those movies in like 12 years. It's. I don't know how long it's been for me, Matt. You know what? It, they come on television sometimes. Yeah, like I've seen snippets I'll, and stuff. And I'll get like. I'll start in the middle and I'll end up watching the whole thing again yeah. for like I don't even know how many times. I mean, I've I can this still. Movie. It's funny. I was watching. We were watching Return of the Jedi, and I'm like, I don't remember the last time I really sat down and watched this whole movie. Maybe when it came out on DVD in like 2004. That might be me but too, like, actually. Yeah, I can still recite the whole thing. Like it's so weird. I could, I could, if you needed, if if the world hung in the balance on someone standing up and performing <laughs> the Emperor Palpatine part from Return of the Jedi, I could just throw the robe on and do it right now. Like it's. <laughs> It's very, it's like so ingrained in my brain. Well, the thing too for me was that when I was working at MTV Spike, game trailers, etc., Spike had the rights to Star right. Wars. I remember that. And so in our office, we had like 50 TVs. And so Star Wars was just on those TVs. Like three separate times. I mean, literally, yeah, they just yeah. stripped it over. Mm-hmm. They paid so much for I it. I remember that. They were, they'd run it like Thanksgiving and Fourth of July. and It like, was a horrible deal for Spike because they gave up so much money for it and nobody watched. Because there's only th- it's like a handful of films when you're running them over and yeah. over. It, well, also, nobody wants to watch those movies with commercials. Yeah. Yeah. And why would you? Because everybody has them like Everyone 20 them. times yeah. over on VHS, DVD, whatever. Like, right. yeah, it's crazy. Uh, a couple notes before we get started. One, this was like the slowest week of the year for games. <laughs> it yeah, really it was, is just barren. Not, not a whole lot happened. I yeah. played, uh, although we did get a, a super secret out of nowhere No Man's Sky update. Yeah, yeah. I yeah I played that mostly. That was what I did. Yeah. What, what, the the little time I've spent playing games is spent playing No Man's Sky. Yeah, your boy, your boy Shane worked hard to get this episode together. So I hope you guys enjoy it. We uh we have a lot of topics, but I don't think too many of them are going to last all that long. So I have a feeling that we're probably not going to hit our three hour mark today. Mm-hmm. It might come in a little shorter. Uh, another thing, next week. It appears that if Matt can do it, Game Face might be shifted to a different day. Both our TriCaster TDs cannot do Tuesday. Mm. Uh, so we might be looking at a different day next week. Uh, keep an eye on our Twitter, at Sifted Games next on Twitter, week. and we'll let you know there. Also, there's a thread in the forums on Sifted where I update on what's happening with Game Face anytime I have any updates. So find that thread. It's almost always at the top and pinned, and you can follow it. And then you'll get an alert every time I update, letting you know when, when Game Face is going to happen. So we'll figure it out. Um, we'll communicate. And we'll let you guys know. Uh, also, two episodes left for mm-hmm. the year at this point. Um, so next week will be probably a regular episode. And the one after that, we'll be doing our Game of the Year awards. Um, over the Thanksgiving holiday, we put up our top, te- top 10 gaming turkeys for 2019. Check that out. Wanted to cleanse ourselves of the awful stuff before we celebrated the good stuff. And there's a lot to celebrate in 2019. So I think that's it. A bunch of you guys right out of the gate here hooked us the F up. Uh, Johnny Hurricane, thank you. You gave us a mega cheer. I'm not even sure what that is, but that's awesome. Thank you. Uh, Ptor, subscribe with Twitch Prime. Thank you. Uh, 
Pitor shared some cheers. Thank you, Emperor Dread. Um, this is great. Awesome. Tomb Raiders 11, thank you. Uh, Danboy 90, thank you. Um, Axel F1986, thank you. All you guys subscribing via Twitch Prime. This is very important to us, people. We oh, flood. Oh, now here comes a bunch more. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Slagathor, Holchazar. Who else we got here? Mega cheer from Slagathor. Yeah, thank you guys. This is freaking awesome. I do. I do want to re reiterate that uh, our Amazon Prime revenue is very, very important to us for our bottom line. We, it's not a bonus. Like we need it. So we really appreciate you guys taking the time to do that. Anybody on YouTube who watches the show, uh, the thousand plus people, if even thirty percent of you guys subscribe via Twitch Prime for us, it would literally like change our business. I know it seems crazy. Because you see all these other Patreons that have are getting like eighty grand a month or whatever the heck they're at at this point. That those two dollars and fifty cents actually matter to us. So if you're tired of throwing your money into this bottomless pit and nobody recognizes you for it, here we are. We would really, really appreciate it. All right, let's get on with the show. We're gonna kick things off with probably the biggest thing that happened over the last four days related to gaming. And I know this is crazy. And Stars member BR. Subscribe. Uh, oh, thank you, Stars member BR. You're awesome, man. He's a member of Stars. Stars. <laughs> we appreciate it, man. It makes a difference for us. Uh, sadly, probably the biggest story of the last week in gaming was Black Friday and Black Friday sales, Cyber Monday sales. It, for me, I wouldn't. Say, the last few years, this has definitely lost some luster. I think. Um, Part of it because you have everything yeah. that you want, I think, in yeah. terms of game stuff. Yeah. I mean, I it's not like if I... If you weren't keeping up with, like, current releases, there was a lot of good deals. What were the, I mean, look, I was curating for Sifted a lot over the last week, and I was curating probably 30% of mm -hmm. everything we've curated per day over the last six days has been deals. Yeah. So we were trying to hook you guys up, but honestly, there just weren't that many amazing deals. Well, part of it is that this, there were no really good Switch anything. Like, it was the same deal as last yeah. year, the Mario and Kart And, like, the games bundle. didn't really drop. Uh, but, like, PlayStation 4, I got, like, I was getting stuff to, like, fill in holes in my casual friends, like, collections. And, like, just about anything first party important was $9 at Best Buy and Target. Like, it was, it, like, I stacked, I got to stack this tall of, like, the you know, God of War, Spider Man, like the most important stuff of the last couple of years. Like if anyone I know who didn't have them, I just got oh, those. Oh, that for was them. a good idea. Yeah. Um, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, part. Of, I mean, I'm sure part of the problem now is like people are just buying like PSN credit. Yeah. Because like people they're buying buy digitally. With, yeah, they want to buy digital. Um, and of course everybody's buying use it going online. Like I got all all these deals online and then picked them up physically at the West Hollywood store. Like I didn't go to a store on. <laughs> you yeah. See that woman put her wig back on. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I didn't go to a store go, and buy it. Jared, go back. Rewind that clip. Just like 10 seconds. The woman gets trampled. And she's laying on the ground. There she is. Yep. Now watch her. She puts her wig back on. Well, you got you to gotta get back on the back on the horse. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, like, this didn't uh, really this doesn't if you seem guys like are it just, happened. If you're just listening to Game Face, you're really missing out. We, we, do a, we try hard to really get good B-roll for you guys for all our segments. Uh, like and when is this footage from? So that's another one of my points. So I was going, you know, I knew we were going to talk about this. I'm Imagine starting... being that rabid about Old Navy. I know, I know. <laughs> Like that, these people need fleeces and they need them now. <laughs> they needed them yesterday. <laughs> but that's my point. So I knew we were going to talk about this. I was trying to find B-roll for the discussion from this year to get like Black Friday stampedes from, there are none. Like yeah. if you go on YouTube and you look at the usual YouTubers who cover this stuff, they're like crazy Black Friday, blah, blah, blah. And then you watch the video and it's them standing in an empty store with a dude sorting through a pile of socks behind him. Like, this stuff doesn't really happen anymore. No, like, I like saw the stores others... have figured it out. People have figured it out. Things are open. Like, yeah, they started, like, being open at, like, 5.30 Thanksgiving night, and they're yeah, open literally now. all night. Like, I mean, even, yeah. even, like, back, you know, it was a few years ago when I got that Wii U. I went to Target at 1.30 in the morning. There's mm -hmm. nobody there. I just pulled it off the shelf, walked up, bought it, went home, and it was broken, so I had to bring it back in the morning. But, like... 
it was fine. Like it was, it was, you know, it, th- this kind of thing only happens in very specific locations, and it doesn't happen as much anymore because like they, the stores have mostly figured out how to order things online. Just go pick them up at the store whenever you want. Like it, you don't, you don't need to do this anymore. You this know? is insane. This montage is insane. And also, a lot of people have wised up to things like, you know, like the doorbuster TVs used to be a big deal. Right. But They'd people, run for them. But yeah. people have wised up that those are all garbage. They're so, like the worst TVs, yeah. yeah. Some of them are specifically made on the cheap for Black for Friday. For Black Friday. So, yeah. like, yeah, never buy a $200 4K TV. Like, that's and they're a, made out of the cheapest components that yeah. really only have to last a year. And it, there were some good deals, like the LG, what was it, the LG C9, I think which is one of the best gaming televisions around, big 4K OLED thing, was $1,700. That, yeah, I saw That's one. That's a $4,000 television. Yeah, I did see another 65-inch OLED for like fourteen fifty. dollars yeah. It was like, originally like $2,500 like or something. Like if you were in the market for like an LG 65-inch OLED, like there was some, I mean, it's not cheap. I mean, obviously $1,500 yeah. is not a small amount of money. Yeah. But like compared to what f- like full retail is even now, like those were crazy deals. I have an, I have an LG B7. And it is the greatest thing. It's stunning. It's amazing. Yeah, it's it's a great TV. So, like, yeah, there were some good deals. It's just it wasn't like, you know, the thing you have in your head when you imagine a crazy Black Friday deal. It's like, oh, no, that's a really good price. Like, over half off yeah for this thing it's still going to cost me like a lot of money a week salary or more it was kind of the same thing with laptops and desktops like there were some decent deals but still you're got to plunk down a big chunk of change there are a couple deal i mean the the playstation pro deal was good that was was the amazing deal i hope all you guys got that if you needed a ps4 there was a solid xbox one x deal uh at target for the jedi fallen order bundle like it was uh it was all right it was bad. I thought it was bad compared to prior years. You're right. That PS4, first it was a PS4 Slim deal. Then it was switched to PS4 Pro in a couple days. That deal was amazing. 300 mm-hmm. bucks for like six games and a PS4 Pro. That's insane. Yeah, but, it's just that like they don't, like stores don't do in the store only deals anymore because they know they'll get more sales by putting them online. Yeah, and they probably want to avoid this crap that yeah. we're watching right now. I mean, Cyber Monday, once that took off, it was only a matter of time before that killed Black Friday in terms of people actually camping out. I mean, you still get like people camping out, but like you, you always notice now that like the shots of like, oh, the line is already here. It's like five chairs. Yeah. No one's even there. They're just in their cars. There are people who know? have absolutely have to get that one thing and they're willing to be the only people sitting there to make sure that mm-hmm. they get it or they want to be on the news right it was funny though i saw a news report where this woman this year was inside a target before they opened the doors and she's standing there hyping it up and the manager is there getting ready to open the door and she's like here we go the stampede is about to happen and the the woman opens the door and there's nobody there <laughs> nobody comes in the door so it has changed a lot. I do feel like the deals have got worse over time. I feel like product manufacturers have kind of reached a point where they're like, you know what, we can't do that anymore, where we're just giving stuff away. Because what's the payoff, really? If you have a lot of stock you need to get rid of, I get it. I was amused to see how many games suddenly were back on the shelves. Yeah. At places like Best Buy that have been gone. For, I mean, the Kingdom Hearts collection has not been yeah. at a Best Buy in months and months, and suddenly they had stacks and stacks. Like, you could tell they were clearing out inventory. Yeah. The in publishers are like, hey, we'll give you these for five bucks. Want to yeah. sell them during Black Friday? Sure. Well, they've just been sitting in distribution warehouses and, like... Collecting dust. Yeah. And they're like, well, let's just mark these all the way down and uh, see how many of them we I mean, can sell. I mean, that was a good... For I th- the most of the week, I think it was 19 bucks for the Kingdom Hearts story so far which is everything but three yeah. like in one bundle yeah. and then I think Saturday Friday or Saturday it was 15 bucks oh, at wow. Best Buy which is like that's 15 bucks for like 300 hours <laughs> it's of insane game. I mean like, that's a good deal you could pay, pay 15 bucks for that and not play anything else till next Black Friday and you'd still probably not be done with Kingdom Hearts yet yeah I think maybe to kind of sum it up in a sentence is I felt like our work this year on curating Black Friday deals on Sifted was more important than ever because mm. it's hard to go out and find that stuff. That's my other yeah, problem. I mean, I found that because I uh, I found that saw that PS4 Pro th- deal. That was the first time I saw it was on Sifted. Yeah, I mean, we I made a conscious effort to do it because I could see. I like I went to Amazon myself to see if I wanted to buy anything. It's so hard to find the crap like that mm-hmm. you want. Like it's not. It's not well organized. So you look, you're looking for something and you end up on this page that has like 8,000 things you don't want. And then 
because like a lot, anybody can sell anything on Amazon. A lot of times when you search for stuff on Amazon, you get this first result that isn't what you're looking for. And there's like 50 pages of it. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is there's so many people now who are trying to get rich quick on Amazon by going to China and getting a product and getting it manufactured and then selling it on Amazon. So like iPhone cases, have you ever Googled or have you ever searched for iPhone cases on Amazon? No. It's insane. So if you, or if you just search for like iPhone, like it ends up all the cases end up popping up and you have to go through like six pages to get to what you want. So anyway, Black Friday shopping has become more of a pain in the ass. So we tried to step up for you guys this year and help you guys in any way that we could. And also, in all honesty, the deals just aren't as great as they used to be. So well, where do you think it's headed? On Steam. Yeah, you're right. Where do you think it's headed? Do you think it's just going to keep going in this direction? Everyone's just going to sit at home and shop. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, why wouldn't you? I mean, I'll miss the laughs that we get from watching these videos, but otherwise. Yeah. But there's fewer <laughs> fewer injuries, fewer crazy shit, fewer employees that have to be put to work on a holiday. Yep. Like, there's no downside to it, really, There isn't. Unless you're a news reporter. Yeah. I just wish the sites, the retail sites, would do a better job of organizing their sales so you could actually find what you want without having to yeah. wade through a sea of worthless crap. But at the same time, I feel like between stuff like Sifted and Cheap Ass Gamer and Wario 64, like, every, like, there's people that do that. Yeah. And do a good job of it. It's true. So, it, it gets there. And also, like, you know, sometimes, I mean, like, sometimes, like, the really good deals happen, like, fast. Like, the... There were some good lightning deals on Amazon, but they lasted like 15 minutes. Yeah, like I can't – I don't have the – like I don't uh, have the time of my life for that. Yeah, <laughs> like, but, I just but like, you also you just don't know. Like so I woke up I think uh, Friday morning or Saturday morning and I had a text from someone saying like lightning deal on the Lego Millennium Falcon, like which is the huge crazy thing. And it was it was on a lightning deal like 9 in the morning for $400. And how much does it normally retail for? 800 Okay. So That's it's a good deal. half off. And yeah. Lego doesn't go on sale. Yeah, why would often, it? You know? <laughs> um, and I was like, cool, it's gone now. And honestly, I probably wouldn't have bought because I already have a giant, I have the old giant Lego Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Um, from you, the old school days. From like, yeah, like 2005 yeah. or so, which I think you can sell now still for like $2,000. I bet. Yeah. Um, but I, I couldn't because uh, it's that's one side of the box is all torn up by the cat. Uh, yeah. It's the one thing my old cat ever destroyed. Wow. Like, she, she, I didn't even know that. She used to sleep behind – she'd go in the closet and sleep behind the Lego boxes. And it wasn't until years and years later when I moved – when I was moving, actually, after you know, months after she died, I, pull, I pulled it out, and there's all this scratching all along the back. I'm like, she never ruined a single thing except the multi, the most valuable Lego item I own. Same thing happened to but, me. But now, I, but now I keep it because I'm like, oh, it's, yeah, she scratched yeah. it. Like, yeah. So I keep that. Yeah, my cat died, and like two years later – I was like cleaning out my closet and I found this area that she had like mm. created for herself that I knew nothing about. That was like she had like pushed all this stuff to the side and created like a little hole for her to sleep in. And it was literally caked with cat hair, like a quarter inch thick. <laughs> like I didn't even know it existed. I was like, oh my God. You found the nest. You had this little nest, this oasis where you could get away from our crazy human beings for a while. But, uh, I, look, I hope that you guys think I'm crazy and you guys got great deals on Black Friday and Cyber Monday. I mean, Monday. I don't think the deals were great on games, but also, like, part of the thing is, like, there's great deals on games all year now. That's right. Like, yeah. It's, it's not it's, – part of the reason is it's not as impressive is because we see those deals regularly anyway. It's not yeah. like a once-a-year thing anymore. We're, we're actually going to talk about a game in a little bit that uh, I was quite discouraged to find its value at hit rock bottom when I tried to, like, sell it back. But we'll get to that <laughs> in a bit. Uh, so anyway, that's Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Hopefully you guys were lucky and got some good deals. Hopefully Sifted helped you guys. I hope it did. Um, hope, you know, we help you guys save money. We're always curating deals on Sifted. We're not quite to Wario 64 level, who seems to have made it his mission in life to uh, deliver dude, video game deals. That dude is plugged in in a way that I can't even, I mean, I think he's a cyborg now. Well, the crazy thing was Wario actually worked with us for quite a while mm -hmm. when we first launched. And one of the reasons why was because, one, he's just, he knows everything that's going on. Like, I... I think on NeoGAF one time, someone drew a cartoon of him, and it was like an octopus sitting with like eight computer screens with like eight arms going out on the computers. Like, that was him. Uh, or it probably still is him. And he worked for us for a long time. And what I was surprised about was when he was curating with us, he never really curated deals. Yeah. And I was like emailing him. I'm like, that's, yo. For, that's for his Twitter. Um, yeah. I'm like, yo, this is like your area of expertise. He'd be like, oh, okay. And yeah. I think you're right. Like, I think he was like, if I do that here – then my Twitter, mm -hmm. there's value in having a Twitter like his. Having that yeah. many followers, like, there's value in it. So I get it. But, yeah, it was interesting nevertheless. Uh, so, anyway, let's move on. 
Uh, we're going to talk next about Metroid, one of my favorite, maybe, I don't know. It's, it's close to my favorite Nintendo franchise. It's definitely my favorite Nintendo franchise. I think franchise. Zelda might trump it there a was a bit. time when i would say zelda was higher but not anymore yeah my, metroid has a much higher batting average with me that i mean i think in general granted there's far fewer of them yeah it helps there's only one metroid game i dislike let's put it that way yeah and there's a there's, <laughs> there's a, a lot more Zeldas, zelda games yeah. i dislike yeah uh so anyway it leaked out this week that nintendo is developing not just one metroid game which we already know about which is metroid prime 4 but two other Metroid and games. And I think we know what one of the other ones is. Uh, so. People are speculating it's going to be the Prime Trilogy. The Trilogy Remaster, which has been so widely talked about that I feel like there's too much smoke for there not to be fire. Or do you think it's one of those cases where people just talked about it so much that it just manifests itself? No, like I think, Nintendo was listening. I think, was like, I think it's too much of a no-brainer, especially because yeah. it was also on the Wii U. And like, it also, isn't that worth, I mean, maybe not for much longer, but isn't that Trilogy on... Like worth a lot of money now? Not, re I mean, it used to be like on Wii, like the the metal, yeah, the steel the box metal case, ones. Yeah. Like used to be worth a lot. Uh, I think once it got released digitally on Wii U, it dropped a bit. Okay. Um, similar to how Xenoblade used to be yep. worth a lot, and after it came out on 3DS and and backwards compatible on Wii U, it was not so much anymore. Yeah. But it, I think it is still up there. Uh, I mean, I think you're probably if you want a sealed copy of that of the Wii version on eBay, you're probably still paying over a hundred bucks. Okay, so yeah, it's come down a good bit then. I think the last time I checked, it was like two fifty. Yeah, or it something used, to, like it used to be one of the most valuable Wii games. Yeah, I have it, but I should have sold it when it was worth something. Still. <laughs> so everyone's kind of assuming that we're going to get yet another release for a Metroid Prime trilogy. I'm okay with that. There's a whole generation of players who didn't play it back when yeah. it came out, or I'd like to play it again. And like, you know, I don't want to drag the GameCube back out, and I'd be interested to play a Metroid Prime 3 with uh, better image quality. Yeah. The, Wii U, the Wii's output is not great. It was terrible. Oh, the yeah. Wii, the it's, Wii. Mean, it's much worse than the GameCube through a yeah. progressive scan. Oh, way worse. Cable. I mean, they're basically the same hardware. Roughly. But, no, like, I mean, that's but why the, GameCube But the image processing compatible. just isn't as good as the GameCube. Oh, yeah. To save money. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm just saying it's the same, like, flipper and, yeah. you know, CPU and GPU and all that. Um, so... We kind of think we know what the first two Metroid games are. Do you mm. want to venture to guess what the third one might be? I mean, my guess the third one would be uh, another 2D game by Mercury Steam. You think? Yeah. Well, Metroid 2, the, what was it? Samus Returns did very well. So yeah. uh, I wouldn't surprise me if they gave them another shot at an original. Maybe an original, maybe a direct sequel to Metroid, uh, Super Metroid. What do you think about just a remake of Super Metroid? You're not going to improve on Super Metroid. I mean, it's pretty much perfect as it is. Yeah, like, but, I mean, you can just get it out there in the market again and make more money off it. Yeah, but, I mean, there's room to do a, a mid-cool there between Super and um, Fusion, uh, even though Fusion does list itself as Metroid 4. Right. But uh, And Super Metroid lists itself as Metroid 3 at the yep. beginning. But like, you could do a 3.5 in there. I'm sure some stuff happened between Super Metroid and... Although there's also like you know is Prime canon like this debate. In what probably, is that? What does the debate say about that? Well, Nintendo uh, Sakurai or what's his name? Who, who makes that? Sakamoto is that his makes name? what? Metroid. Who's the, who's the guy in charge of Metroid? I honestly don't know. He was. Uh, oh, you mean the guy Tanaba? Maybe the guy who ended up moving to Texas to work with Retro. No, he's the guy who like wrote the manga. He's the one. He's the one who basically brought in other M story that like. Ooh. That's encouraging. Other M, well, no, other M's. I mean, he worked on all of them, but like other M's uh, story was basically her, her characterization is taken basically directly from the terrible manga he wrote, uh, and was only in Japan for reasons that should be pretty obvious if you played Super, uh, other M. Um, I mean, I guess other M is technically between Super Metroid and Metroid Fusion, but maybe we could just decanonize that or something because it was god awful. Um, but Prime, because of other M. Uh, Prime, the Prime games were said to be non-canon. Oh, at, at the at the time, other M was coming out. I wasn't aware of that. Um, which a lot of people had trouble with, and part of this may have been to address the con the complaint. Like when Ridley shows up in other M, she basically shits her pants and yeah. screams and everything, which is not very Samus. Yeah, it doesn't and, make sense within the context. Well, especially in the sense like at this point, she's fought and presume you know thought she killed Ridley like five times in yeah. in the. But if you remove <laughs> the Prime game, she's only fought him once. Yeah. Okay. Or twice maybe, and so I guess that's a little more. But like a still, hint. yeah. You've already killed him twice. Like who care? Like okay, he's back again. Just shoot him again. Like yeah. it just doesn't seem. <laughs> 
it's so bad. Um, that's the one Metroid game I obviously don't like. Um, even though I like the look of it. Like, I think it looks nice. I, I wish it was good, uh, but it is not. That was kind of the first time Nintendo really teamed up with Team Ninja, right? I mean, now they're like best yeah. bros, and Team Ninja I mean, that makes a ton or, was of that, games. Was that, bef- that was before Razor's Edge, or Ninja Gaiden 3? Yeah. Yeah, because that, that was a Wii U game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that was their first. Yeah, because everyone was shocked that they were teamed up with Team Ninja for this. It that sounded was, like a great idea Oh, at first. yeah, it should have been. <laughs> it didn't work out though, so well. And, but, like, it's, you know, the story's terrible. The characterization of Samus is just horrifying. Um, and then, like, the actual game is not very good in the sense that, like, they it had those a, goofy, like, motion controls where you'd, like, flip. Motion controls were weird. Like, flicking to shoot, to, to aim for the rockets is weird and to dodge when you're doing that. But also, on top of that, like, like I find the, the level design very non-Metroid. I mean, yeah. I, I'm not going to go f- so far as to say lazy, but, like, yeah. the fact that you have all your upgrades already and you're just waiting for Adam, Qu- Queen Adam, to tell you that it's okay to use your life-saving technology – like, means that you don't have to find any of the stuff anymore, which means there's no exploration to find. Like, you're yeah. cutting it's out half really of what makes Metroid Metroid. Yeah. And then you got those sections where you have to find, like, hunt the pixel on the, the static yep. screen with the fucking Wiimo. Like, what a <laughs> terrible goddamn game. Um, <laughs> Full of bad ideas, that's Tons sure. of bad ideas. <laughs> Just not a not a good move anywhere in there, other yeah. than, like, I, other than like I like the look of it. Like, I like the visual style of it. But that's about it. Yep. Yeah. Um, but isn't Nintendo – I mean, it seems like Nintendo's M.O. right now is to do a remake. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't think you want to touch that, especially since you – Not Other M. I'm talking no, about Super Metroid. Yeah, still. I mean Super Metroid. Oh, okay. Like, there's no way – there's no reason to do that to Super Metroid, especially since you've already got Super Metroid on the Super Nintendo service – uh, of the online thing, which I might add has not been updated since they put it up in yeah, October. I know. Um, I mean, I know they said no more monthly updates, but Jesus, people. Yeah, it's Come bad. on. Yeah. People are paying 20 bucks a year for that. I know it's not a ton of money, but, like, it's a service. Get You're on it. still paying for it. There hasn't yeah. even been any new NES games. Yeah, Nintendo's sliding by thinking, oh, people can play online. That's good enough for 20 bucks. I mean, that's yeah. basically what's happening. It's, yeah. it's just saying for 20 bucks, that's pretty much all you're getting. And I guess if you look at... The price of the other services, it kind of makes sense. Oh, but sure. But I'm not paying 20 bucks a year to, to yeah, play you online. Don't, you don't I'm, play online no, on Switch. I'm paying, I'm paying 20 bucks a year to get Super Nintendo games, yeah. and they are not delivering so far. Yeah. They gave, I mean, that was a really good first batch, yep. but keep it up. But I think like you've got Super Metroid on there, and that's more than enough. Um, like you but don't, why do you remake anything? If, if you don't want to remake Super Metroid, why remake anything? Muh? Yeah, I mean, well, you're, you're well, reasoning... You remake Metroid 2 because Metroid 2 is unplayable now. Um, Me- Super Metroid, I think, is entirely playable now. Yeah. Like I mean, I, you mean I, playable as in, like, you have... you could, It's easy to just be able to play it, or it's still fun to play? It's still fun to play. Okay. Like, Metro, go back to the game original Game Boy Metroid 2. It's rough. Like, there's a reason there was the fan remake, too. It's just... Yeah, you, yeah. Want, you want to bring that game up to Super Metroid standards, basically. Whereas Super Metroid, I think, even if you've never played a Super Metroid before, and you pick it up in 2019, you're still going to have fun playing it. Like, I mean... Link to the Past, though, was a good, still a good game as a handheld game. Oh, yeah. But Link to the Past wasn't a oh, handheld sorry, Link's game. Awakening. Sorry. Uh, I mean, yeah. But also keep in mind that Link's Awakening is not easily available on the Switch otherwise. Yeah, that's a good point. That's why I was asking you whether you were talking about access or actual... It's a little bit of both in this case. Yeah. But I think you've already got Super Metroid available on there and charging money for it, technically, so I don't see the... the bit. What if the they made a there. 3D version of Super Metroid that's <laughs> kind of like Prime? Yeah, it's, it's never... It's, that's I mean, a you, lot of I work. I mean, you could do it, but <laughs> it's just like the, the, the appeal of Super Metroid is so much in the snappiness of the 2D controls yeah, that yeah. I, I just don't – I don't see what you gain from that. You might as well just make a new game. And they are making a new game. It's called Metroid Prime 4. Yeah. So, like, I think I think your best bet here is Metroid Prime 4, Metroid Tr- Prime Trilogy Remaster on, you know, Bundle Night or whatever. Um, that better come with a good amiibo. Yeah. And um, uh, some a new 2D – like Metroid by Har- uh, Harmony Gold. What the hell am I thinking? Uh, uh, Mercury Steam. Harmony Gold. Harmony Gold. What the? <laughs> got Robotech on the brain over here. I don't know what the hell, where the hell that came from. It's because Mercury Steam and Harmony Gold are slightly. And I mean, it kind so. of makes sense, yeah. Do you think we're going to see Metroid Prime 4 next year? No. No. Still no. No. I mean, look. I mean, I think we'll s- they'll show it to us, but I don't think it's going to come out next year, no. Does it shock you that the Switch is all, like, basically three years old now oh, doesn't it, it seem up? like it's flown yeah. by yeah i mean it's got a lot i mean it's not it, it the the change is the difference i think is 
three years and then you look at what's come out for it from Nintendo, you're like, yeah, that's about three years worth of input, like output. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. I feel like they have a healthy amount of things have come out for it. But you got to remember, usually by now, Nin- especially because like Nintendo's already bailed on right. its console. And also, we're so used to waiting so long. I didn't realize so I was digging through like older games just because everybody's doing their decade picks now. Yeah. And uh, I was looking at one guy's list who his pick for game of the year for 2013 was Saints Row 4, which <laughs> to me was the crazy. I'm like, did nothing else come out in 2013? So I looked it up and just a lot of other better things. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. But just in the cursory look of that, I saw that that's when Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon came out. Oh. And I'm like. Even it was that, that long ago? Yeah. Like, you used to wait six years between sequels for these things? Like, that's crazy. Yeah, it depends on the franchise. But, yeah, for some of them, now they're getting now, you know, I think we will see Breath of the Wild 2 or whatever they call that next year. Do you um, think we'll see that before Metroid Prime I 4? Because I think they started over on Metroid Prime. They when did. They, when they switched to Retro. I mean, they did, yeah. yeah. I mean, Retro says that they started from scratch. And that was only, what, about 18 months ago? Yeah. Around there? Yeah. Not that long ago. So, you're right. I mean... I, I just wonder if Metroid Prime 4 is going to be a Switch 2 game. Uh, maybe. Like, it's not impossible. I, mean, I think it'll still be on this, but I think I think there'll be crossover. I think everything moving forward will be taking your library with you and Mac backwards compatible, yada, yada, yada. I mean, Breath um, of the Wild 2, to me, could come any day now. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to realize they've been working on it for three years now. So, Well, a little less than that because they had to do the DLC. But right. They, but they basically said, we finished the first DLC and decided we'd rather use all our other ideas that were going to be DLC for a new game. For the sequel. So for the yeah. sequel. So, they, they, so that's basically... You're probably looking at, like, they started somewhere around October, November, two years ago. Yeah. So I would say next holiday, pretty much a guarantee. We Actually, get... no, to October, November 2017. Yeah. That is two yeah, years ago. Yeah, that's two ago. years ago. Yeah. yeah so well, you prob- said three years, and I'm, like, thinking about March is three years. For the yeah. Blue, uh, you know, they already had the engine and everything. I'm thinking next holiday we get I think get next it. holiday is probably Zelda, the next Zelda. Yeah. yeah. And and two Zeldas on a system is a good yeah. good set. It's a good uh, Yeah, the, good Wii, the Wii had two. All the good systems had two. Yeah, N64 true. had two. But well, the, Super Nintendo didn't have two, but that's okay. But the crazy part is you look back across the last several generations for Nintendo, this is the point where it, they just ghost. Mm-hmm. This is where we stop seeing first-party software output. This is where the third parties start to bail. Even with the Wii, which sold, what, 150 million units? Even with the Wii, mm-hmm. Nintendo, and it's by its third year, yeah, but was because like, the, eh. Because the software wasn't selling. Right, yeah. Like, now they've got software sales. They've got unit sales. Like, they're, they got it's system sales. It's great to see work. this new Nintendo, for sure. Like they, I'm surprised. I don't know if there's anyone left of the company that remembers that other than Miyamoto. Yeah, it could be true. Uh, so there you go, three Metroids like think, coming. Like Miyamoto's just sitting or, like holding court in like ca- the cafeteria. He's like, this is what it was like, children. Yeah. <laughs> Back when we ruled it all. I will say one thing about Nintendo, though. I mean, most of those people stick around. Oh, yeah. Like uh, these other platform holders, it's just constant movement. Like I'm pretty impressed that Phil Spencer has stayed at Xbox for as long as he has. But for the most part, I mean, look at Sony. The turnover at that top oh, at yeah. Sony, like – that doesn't I'm happen in Nintendo. Surprised. I'm mildly surprised that Reggie left. Yeah. Nintendo, I mean, Nintendo Japan in particular, I mean, those people are lifers. Mm. Like, when once they get in there, they're there until they retire or something else happens. Yeah. So. I mean, that's also much more common in Japan. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Not like, so I'm much sure, I'm sure all the people we saw sleeping under their desks at Polyphony years and years ago are still sleeping under they their desks. They probably are. So. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. Three Working Metroids. on their second game. <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds like next year is going to be like the year of Metroid. Do you think it would be weird to put out the trilogy and then the other game and not follow it up with Prime 4 in a it, kind of a immediate amount of time? Um, I mean, I think Prime 4 is probably 2021. Um, like is, early 2021, you think? Maybe. Uh, like I, don't, I don't know. I don't really have a guess on that. Yeah, it's hard. Um, it's hard to even gauge. But I think 2021 is a pretty safe bet. Yep. Um, just because of how they've had to start over. And also, we, we know for certain that Nintendo does tend to nitpick retro yeah. stuff yeah. pretty hard. So That's there might good, be, though. There might be some revisions happening. So we'll see. Yep. But I'd, I'd, I would, I mean, I think we will see Metroid Prime 4 shown for the first time next year. Oh, we I, have to. But I don't think we will see it released next yeah, year. Yeah, I think we'll see the first in game footage at E3 we'll, we'll next get, year. We'll get like the trilogy remaster next year or something. Yep. So there you go, if or you're a Metroid tri- fan. Or Trilogy Remaster early 2021 and Metroid Prime 4 that fall. That makes sense. Yeah. But it is also about time for Mercury Steam to have a new game ready. I mean, you're right. It hasn't done 
anything really so if for that, a while. If that's what they're working on, we might get that next year. That's a good spot on your part, actually picking up on that. You're right; they haven't done anything for a while. They yeah. had that free to play game that they worked on for mm-hmm. a while, and it tanked. But and... their last major project was Metroid, yeah. and that was two years ago. Yeah, so. that's true. So there you go. If you're a Metroid fan, good days are a coming. All right, let's move on. We're going to talk next about spoilers. Something happened this week that, to the best of my recollection, I do not remember ever happening. And that is there's a commercial for Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order making the rounds right now that has a huge endgame spoiler. How do you feel about that, Matt? Well, I don't really think it's much of a spoiler. Yeah. Like a, like a character appearing in something is not much of a spoiler to me. Uh, the bigger spoiler to me, I thought, was uh, Baby Yoda in The Mandalorian, which was being posted everywhere on Twitter and other social media the day after that show went live. Oh, the, like the minute and, the show went live. And no one complained. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't care about spoilers. But it's spoilers. so cute. I don't care about spoilers, <laughs> really. Like, there, if, if, if a story can be spoiled by knowing basic plot elements, it was not a very good story. Do you think Baby um, Yoda, though? How about that? I mean, that's pretty big. Well, here's the thing. Baby Yoda is more of the premise than a spo- I mean, it's a spoiler for the first episode. Yeah. Like, it was a nice, it's a nice surprise. And I, I appreciate that uh, Lucasfilm kept that under wraps as tight as it was. So you would be pissed, though, um, if you found out about that before you watched it? No. No. I, as a matter of fact, I did find out about it before oh, I watched it. Okay. But I was like, oh, that's really neat. Like, that, the fact that they're touch. Uh, th- I mean, Lucas didn't want to touch Yoda's race ever. Like, he, he like we, did, we don't even know what the name of the race is. Like, yeah. we have no idea what his species Why is, is that? called. No, only George Lucas knows. I mean, you never see anyone. F- else from his yeah, race do. Wait, do you in episode one really there's a, there's a female yoda species on the jedi council named yaddle i don't remember that well she's only in the background of a few shots oh, okay but she is there Interesting. like there are other members of the species okay. they're around there they're very strong of the force there was a rumor fan kind of fan rumor fan wank fanfic uh f- through the years that yoda's well, y- he, that he was a will w-h-i-l-l uh, the original scripts of Star Wars are said to be taken from the Journal of the Wills. Okay. As they were like the chronicles of the history of the Force, basically. Uh-huh. And there was a fan theory that Yoda was a will. That, oh. he, that that's what those were. Like it's a like, scholar, basically. Like, like, and then in Rogue One, uh, Chirrut and, uh, and, and Baz, the, 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 the monks, the monk guys... They are guardians of the wills. Oh, they say that when they said that in the theater, I lost my damn mind. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I, like I was like, deep cut. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, I, I, I really feel like Gary Whitta had to be responsible for yeah, that. A lot yeah. of his stuff got rewritten in that movie, but I feel like he had to be the one that brought wills into the fucking story. <laughs> but um, because he is that kind of Star Wars fan. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, um, he has the perfect job. And uh, so, yeah, that was a thing. But, like, obviously we don't know anything about what this is going to turn out to be or why they're bringing this child into the story of Mandalorian or whatever. Like, it's right now it's just there to do kind of the lone wolf and cub thing and look incredibly adorable. Yeah. Um, and it's succeeding. Yeah. And also, here's here's another good thing. Uh, Werner Herzog, again, cannot believe he is in a Star Wars thing, basically playing Werner Herzog. Like, he's, I mean, he's basically Werner Herzog in Star Wars. Like, there's no character here. It's just him. Yeah. Um, which, if you're a film nerd, like, it's very funny just to see him doing that. But uh, they were talking about on set, like, we're going to shoot, you know, empty plates so we can replace him, Baby Yoda with CG if we need to. And he, ca- he was like, you are cowards. Like, you, you have to <laughs> use the puppet. Like, you have to keep yeah. the puppet. And he was right. Like, the fact yeah. that it's a puppet helps a lot. And even... Um, uh, is it Deborah Chow who directed uh, episode three, uh, the first woman to ever direct live action Star Wars anything? And episode four is directed by Bryce Dallas Howard, uh, yeah. Ron Howard's daughter. Yep. But Deborah Chow, I think that I think that's her. I hope I'm not misremembering her name. But she said that halfway through the shoot, she was giving directions to the puppet. <laughs> Which is how you, when Lucas said he would do that, like Irvin Kirshner and Lucas would do that to Yoda when yeah. Frank Oz was doing Yoda. So like uh, that is. The sign that it's working. Yeah, basically. absolutely. So yeah, I, and but like the thing that I was amazed by when that started popping up is uh, almost no one complained. The Yoda stuff that that Yoda was being posted. I, was, I didn't I, see anyone complain. Now part of it may be because, it was always just oh yeah. Well, part of it may be because <laughs> when you see Baby Yoda, you can't be angry. You can't. You really can't. Um, <laughs> if you are, you're a miserable person. That's yeah. all. I now, but say. I do appreciate that Lucasfilm made a conscious effort to make sure no one knew that was going to happen before it happened. Like the, the merch isn't going to be ready until May because they didn't want to let it out of out of right. you know out of their. The, and there is merch. Like I was at Disneyland a couple weeks ago, and they had a vehicle from the fourth episode. 
a toy of it, like really? sitting in one of the stores. I'm like, I don't know what that is. It's called Mandalorian. I guess that's coming up, you know. But so they they are not af- we're not afraid to do a little minor spoiler. But they did they kept that thing under wraps. And I, honest to be honest, even finding out about it on Twitter because I just hadn't gotten to it yet, even though I had Disney Plus, um, I saw that. I'm like. I'm like, I haven't been shocked by something like that in a long time. I was like, that's great. Like, that makes me want to watch the show. So I think something similar is happening here, where if you aren't already on board with Fallen Fallen Order, maybe you see this character is in this, and you're like, oh, I got to see what happens there. Because it doesn't give away what's what happens. happening. Yeah. Like, it's just like this guy's in it. You know, it's like knowing Thanos is in Guardians of the Galaxy doesn't ruin Guardians of the Galaxy. It just tells you Thanos is in it. So... I mean, it's a pr- it's a little weird to do less than a month after, but like Sony Sony Spider Man trailers, both Homecoming and oh, I think Homecoming and Far From Home and Amazing Spider Man Two, the trailers have the last shot of the movie in them. Yeah, it's true. So like, some, so there is an example. Some marketing, I was asking earlier for yeah. another example, and there's one. I mean, I'm not, I can't think of an example for video games, yeah, but I, I can either. certainly think of examples for movies, and they're almost all Sony. Sony marketing does not care. Well, the other thing about it, too, is the irony of spoilers is that unless you've already experienced the piece of content or entertainment or whatever, you don't even know it's a spoiler. Mm -hmm. It's only when somebody else tells you, hey, that's a spoiler, do you realize that it actually is one? Right. It's like you can't just watch – if you just watch that commercial on television and you hadn't played the game – Nobody's going to watch that and see that shot and say, oh, my God, I can't believe they spoiled that. Because you don't know it's a spoiler. Right. Like the most, most of the people I've seen complaining about this are people who have already finished the right. game. Right. It's like it's not a spoiler for you. You're, you are causing the problem by telling people it's a spoiler. Now they know. Now they're going to be like, oh, I guess that character that's in that commercial is a big deal. I had no idea. Now I do. Now I'm mm-hmm. pissed off. Now I'm disappointed. It's crazy. I mean, I th- I think it's probably like in terms of like getting people in 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 and on board for like a, a holiday purchase, like it's probably wise to put that character in the marketing. Yeah, you don't know that that's at the end of the game. It's unless you know you've been to the end of the game. Yeah, I. I it makes sense that that character would be here in this period. Like I, the, I think it's just another place. case of internet manufactured outrage. Well, everybody's got to be mad about something. It's so funny. I don't understand it. Like, why? Life is so much better when you're not angry. Like, try it sometime. Yeah. Um, and let and Life you know is what? often better when you're not on the internet. It's true. It absolutely is true. Like, when I go home over Christmas, I just disconnect. And hmm. those, like, week and a half, 10, 13 days or whatever are the most peaceful days of my entire year. It's like I'm not worried about what people are saying on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. It's nice. It's good to disconnect every once in a while and reconnect with real people and reality. So, yeah, this to me is much to do about nothing. Another manufactured story. just another story. woman yelling at a cat. Pretty much. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. We're going to talk next about the Steam controller, Matt. Did you ever buy a Steam controller? No. I just did. <laughs> did, they, did you get your order through? They didn't I did. It? Yeah, I got one for five bucks. Yeah. So, why did you never buy one? Because it doesn't have analog sticks. Yeah. Is that the the deal breaker? I don't need one. I thought for it that. did have a stick. No, it's just it's just like kind of trackpad, D paddy sort of things. As far as I knew, I have an Xbox Elite controller. I do not need. Yeah, I guess see, it does have stick. little sticks, yeah. but like those things on the sides, like I don't. What the hell is that? I mean, I know what they're for, but I'm never gonna. I got. I have a mouse. Like, I'm not going to ever use it for that. Well, it's just like so the trackpad Xbox... on the DualShock 4. Right, it's but, I have, the same but thing. I have an Xbox Elite if I want to play with a controller. And uh, if I want to play with a mouse, I have a mouse. And I don't do the big screen thing, so. Yeah. I mean, it was designed to play PC I mean, games if, on a TV. I mean, if I'd seen it for five bucks, that maybe. Like, but, like, I didn't. So, oh, well. Yeah. I look, Again, because I've been deal hunting for the last, like, week. I saw it as soon as it broke. So, I did get one. Um, There's one thing I don't need is more controllers. Really? I have a, I have a lot. Of, I gotta get rid of some controllers. Yeah, I mean, I some of them are. I mean, too. not the like, current ones. I mean, a lot of them are old. I've, I I don't know how I ended up with so many Dreamcast controllers, but it's got to stop. I know why I ended up with a bunch of them because at that Sega Fire Sale when the Dreamcast was uh, just continued, that might be it. That might, yeah. you could buy controllers for like three dollars. Yeah, I, that, that might be what happened. You're right. I still have like five Dreamcast controllers of all different colors mm-hmm. and IB. New Mine are box, all yellow. Never Mine are all, well, not yellow. They're they're white. They used to be white. Several of them are yellow now. Oh yeah, like my la- the the controller I got at launch is mm. ugly. 
Like, yeah. white controllers in general are a bad idea because they almost always yellow or get brown or whatever. Um, but, look, I have, like, six Nintendo 64 because back then, like, you needed controllers. Like, mm. now you don't really. Like, every system I've bought for the last, I don't know, eight or ten years, I just have two controllers because I never need more than that. There's never any four Sometimes player. I don't even have that much. Yeah. I mean, there's never – Four-player couch play. I haven't done that That's since, a, like, yeah. 2000. Well, at some like, point, I remember I needed to do, like, I needed a second player for, a, like, a trophy on a PS4 game, and I realized I didn't have oh. a second controller. So I, what I think what I ended up doing is I plugged in one of my fighting sticks. and Because all I, I, all I needed was a second player to be in the right. game and yeah. then do what I needed to do, and it counted because it was co-op or whatever. Yeah. So I literally just plugged in a fighting stick and hit start on it and had that work. But I had no second controller for a long, long yeah. time. You don't need them anymore. Why do you think that the Steam Controller failed, not for you personally, but just in general? Because it, it's Valve. Generally, it makes really good stuff, really thoughtful stuff that, you know, they know what they're doing. They've been PC gamers mm-hmm. as long as anyone. I don't know. Like, I'm, I mean, to be honest, I didn't even know it wasn't doing well until they shut it down last week. Oh, I mean, look at Steam Link, too. I mean, they ended up yeah. having to give those away as well. I mean, you can get those now for like five or 10 bucks. Yeah. So the, it seems, I got one, I got one for like a buck 75 or something. Yeah. It, it seems the, the last two pieces of hardware that valve put out that was not VR related have completely tanked. But what do you think? Do you think because over the last five years, it's become much easier to use console controllers on your PC. Do you think that's why people are like, why do I need a steam controller? I mean, partly, but I think it's also just like, I think the vast majority of people who use Steam do not play it on a TV with, or at least if they do, they probably bring a wireless keyboard and mouse with them, and they just don't. They why, don't need it. Why use this like, you know, halfway solution when you have you have the real thing one way or the other, whichever you want. That's what I, that's my thing. Is like, I mean, I don't play Steam stuff on the on the, my TV because it's in the other room and the network isn't fast enough really to, to oh, really? play it without. Like, like I I tried it when I because it's all the house is all wired, but I tried it. And like you can't do the counters in Batman Arkham City because yeah. it's too you have slow. to. It has to be a specific genres. Yeah, and frankly, like stuff that like you'd use a mouse for, I generally prefer to play at a computer desk. Yeah, and I mean the truth be truth be told, though, you know, a lot of franchises where you used to look at them and be like, that will never work with a controller and like sticks and buttons. Yeah, pretty much everything. They figured, they figured out how out. to make it work now. Like you can play Civilization with a normal console controller, yeah. and you can play it just fine. And that's what I, those are the type of games that I found myself playing with my Steam Link are yeah. games that aren't dependent upon latency to yeah, I mean I think some things are still sub like I wouldn't want to try to play like Total War with the right. controller right, right, right. but like I'm sure you could do it but like why would you um it's just, it just wasn't a priority, and if I wanted to play stuff with a controller, I had a had. I mean, I think the Xbox Elite controller is the probably the best controller I've ever owned. So why would I downgrade to a Steam controller? Frankly, yeah. I mean, but I don't even, know why. Like widely, it failed. Like I mean, maybe because the same reason the Steam boxes failed. Like it's people would rather do it themselves or use the stuff they already have. Even watching this pro, kind of this expense. promo video from Valve, where they're, where it's trying to sell the controller. I struggle to see – now, there was one case that it's actually – It's also ugly as hell. It is ugly. Uh, but the only case that I've seen in this B-roll where I'm like, oh, that's a good idea, was watching them type because right. it's way easier to go around an on-screen keyboard when you have that trackpad. But otherwise, like, they're even showing, like – I don't even know if that was Age of Empires Which, like, or hey, what. Which, like, hey, Sony, you, you know you have that, They right? do. It's been on the DualShock 4 <laughs> yeah. all along. Yeah, seriously. Um, but maybe they just feel like that theirs isn't accurate enough to. Uh, uh, remember let when Sony's like on PlayStation Three? I think it was uh, where like when the keyboard popped up to enter text, it was in alphabetical order. Yeah, it wasn't a like, keyboard. How <laughs> fucked up is that? I'm mean, like, <laughs> well, look, they're a Japanese company. Keyboard Japanese keyboards are way different than mm-hmm. Western. Or keyboards. sometimes they do the thing where the, it popped up and it was like it was like a cell, like the old cell phone oh, yeah, keyboard yeah, yeah, where yeah. you had to press Kept five three, three times. times to get yeah. <laughs> So bad, guys. I don't know what they were thinking. I really have no idea. Yeah, that was sta- that was standard issue at the time for yeah. them. But like, it's just, like Xbox was so far ahead of them on oh, that. Oh yeah. So, do you think that we'll ever see a controller like this again, made specifically for PC gaming? Uh, probably not until like Epic tries it. <laughs> <laughs> you do think someone else will try it again, though? I think it's inevitable that someone will try it again. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it'll be any more successful than what it already is, but, like... I just wonder if people look at it and they're like, if Valve couldn't make it work, how do we make it work? 
Yeah, but that's why I said epic. Cause like, right, because they try to do Tim, everything. Tim Sweeney don't care. <laughs> he really doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't look at Valve like a lot of people do. He uh, he looks at them as a leader that can be toppled instead yes. of this infallible entity. And I think most people look at it the other way. Like, other people would be like, oh, no, if Valve can't do it, what can we do? And Tim Sweeney's like, Valve fucked up. Let's move Let's in. Let's move in like and do it better. Yeah, absolutely. So He sees opportunity where everybody else sees a cautionary tale. Yeah. Uh, you still might be able to find these for five bucks. I'm not sure. I jumped on it right away. I don't. They they started canceling orders. Oh, they did. So like they so, like they clearly ran out of stock. It's interesting that nobody cared until they were going away. Because they've been should have sold it for five bucks. I mean, the they've whole been, time they've been cheap for a long time. Like they've yeah. been like ten bucks or whatever for quite a while. And dropping it that five bucks, I don't think that that's what convinced people to do it. I think they're like, oh, this is going away. It's I'll probably, never be yeah, able to get one. Probably a combination. Might of those be a things. collector's thing at some point, although I doubt it. There's a lot of them out there. Yeah. But. Well, all, it's just also for me, I was like, I don't need another controller of any. I mean, same reason I didn't order that Super Nintendo Switch controller, even though it did sell out. But yeah. like, would I want that? No, it's just, it's just more clutter. You just don't need it. It's like you can plug any controller into the USB port on your rig, and they work. Yeah. Like even like these 8-bit does, like every third-party company is making controllers, make sure that those controllers you just plug and play on PC. Yeah, and you can do that with your Xbox controller you already have, your DualShock 4 you already have. Even now you can use Joy-Cons on PC if you want to work for it a little bit. So... I just don't know if there's a market for controllers like this. And going forward, I think there's even less of one. So I think that might this might be the unicorn. Like, I think this might be that one time where a big company decided, you know what, we're going to invest a ton of R&D and, and money for manufacturing into this idea, and we'll see what happens. And they saw what happened. Well, that's what happened. <laughs> yep, and that's what happened. So there you go. Again, another instance where I wish we had taps on the TriCaster so we could send the Steam Controller off in glory but uh maybe someday maybe for next year maybe for next season all right let's move on we're going to talk next about the last decade um it's hard to believe when i was thinking about this topic today doing pre-production for the show it was really hard for me to wrap my head around the idea that we're 20 years past y2k yep that's bonkers like well, uh Blade Runner takes place in the past now. I know it's nuts. Like, I, I think I was I was uh, talking to one of my friends who was uh, we were just talking about old job interview stories, and one of his old job interviews was at Lucasfilm back in the day, uh, when it was up in Marin, and he had to go to Marin. He'd never been to the Bay Area before. He went, he drove up in a rental car, and he had to he did the interview, and he had to get back to the Oakland airport, but he took a wrong turn, and ended up on the Golden Gate Bridge. And not a bad place to end up, but, but if not you're where to make you want to go. Trying to make a flight at Oakland, not <laughs> yeah. the best place to be. Yeah. And so, so he goes, and he's like, and he says, and I couldn't figure out where I need to go, and it was it was 2000, so like my phone was useless, and I'm like, because because it didn't have Google Maps or any, any uh, kind of like, you know, uh, had, there was no GPS. Sm- yeah, you know, there's no GPS. There's no, and it's, I was like, that's funny that like. Our tech we had in the year 2000, we now think of as back when shit didn't work properly. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it was primitive <laughs> it's, now. It's pretty crazy to think about, man. Like, 20 years since Y2K. Yeah. And I think part of it is for our generation growing up, Generation X is what we're we're usually kind of put into, the box we're put into. Assuming we're mentioned at all. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. We're kind of irrelevant. We well, become the- We're too small to be- uh, The lost yeah. generation. We're, we're sort of- stu- Well, that's another- That was a different generation. Right. But we're sort of stuck between the boomers and the millennials. Yeah. Drinking our wine. <laughs> Sharing it with the Zoomers. Yeah. It's like, let's, let's let them fight. Yeah. <laughs> but I think a big part of why it's hard for me to comprehend where that we've made it to 2020 is because when we were growing up, like, you kind of had this thing in the back of your head that, like, we were never going to get here. Right. Do you have that, like... No, I mean, that was definitely a thing. Like, like the, all the far-flung sci-fi oh, movies were 2000. set in, like, 2020. Like, you had uh, 2020, 2025. Yeah. Like, those were kind of the far-flung things. Or even the year – I mean, the year 2000 was a big thing. Back, you know, yeah, the world was going to end. Conan, all the computers were going to shut down. Conan did all this stuff for, like, in the year 2000. 2000. Like yeah. <laughs> and even that – you remember, um, like, the History Channel used to run that show Beyond 2000 about, yeah. like, new military tech. And then Tech TV picked that up while we worked there and had to change the title because it was 2002. Yep. (laughs) But there was just this pervading opinion that something was going to happen where we were never going to reach, like, the point where this stuff was going to happen. And 
it, it is kind of weird to think. Well, I mean, we still don't have our flying cars. Right. And it, that's what I was about to the say. The year 2000. Where are the flying cars? <laughs> where? Why? 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 That's a great ad. But it is funny to think about 20 years ago where you thought tech would be now. And where it ended up, you're right. Like, I think we all were, like, flying cars. Like, we thought it was going to be, like, I mean, the I never Jetsons. Thought, I never thought flying cars were going to be a thing. But, but like, I think it, we thought it was going to be more like the Jetsons and less like society's always been with we, a couple gadgets. But that's also what the future always is. Like, yeah. you know, Walt Disney can tell you about how you're going to live in a plastic house in 1986 all he wants, but it's not going to be a thing, you know? Yeah. Like, and the other thing is, like, you can't predict what the crazy swerves are going to be. Like, you can't. very few old sci-fi novels, no matter how prescient and smart they were, even, like, you know, 2001, A Space Odyssey, they didn't call the Internet. Right. You know? Nobody or, thought of it. And, of course, the Nobody big thing— Nobody thought of, like, cell phones either. Well, no, I mean— th- Cell phones were not out there. I mean, cell phone you technology. Look at like Star Trek and their little Star- gadgets. Like- yeah, but but a lot of cell phone tech was based on Star Trek. Sure, like that's one of the reasons. But then the thing you can't predict is the iPhone. Yeah, like the iPhone is the most influential device in the history. It probably at least the last century. Probably. Um. It. I mean, maybe planes. But like. Yeah. But in terms of how something influences everything, the iPhone is top three at the very least. Because yeah. like, and after that, it all changes to the point that if you go back and even watch like the first Transformers from 2007, the fact that they're all talking on Nokia's and they're displaying like a Nokia phone is like the cutting edge of tech is bizarre. It now is bizarre. Because yeah. everyone's like, what? It, does, it has buttons? What the hell is wrong with you? Yeah. Um, the fact that even your grandparents know what apps are. I know. Now. Yeah. Remember when killer app was a thing you had to explain to yeah, people? Yeah. No, everybody understands what that is oh, yeah, now because yeah. they know what an app I is. I mean, look, all our verbiage has translated over to mainstream. Yeah. All those things that we've been saying for 20, 30 years, they're all just part of vernacular now. They're not like these nerd coin, yeah. like well, coin I, terms. I see it. that when I go back home and people are like, wow, because like, I worked at a comic store in high yeah. school, a comic arcade porn rental shop and uh it was downtown <laughs> one of those it was it's kind of like one of those there were more of those than you might think in the 90s i'm it, just saying it, it's kind of like one of those combination taco bell pizza huts a little bit yeah <laughs> the, the tacos are just a very different breed um the uh but yeah that was where i, I know everybody would come in and, and see me sometimes and be like oh you know, you the play nerd more, play with Mortal the Com- comics and the oh, yeah and the games but, you know a lot of them were drama nerds or whatever yeah. and, i mean there was we, but our, now but comics at, but now you go are back as and mainstream like, as they get you know people are like oh comics that's nice okay yeah. whatever but now there's like oh my god iron man i'm like see yeah now like, they're I, into it more than like we are yeah. Like, and to be fair, like you, funny. you give give them like a, an old comic, and they still think it's stupid because they are stupid. Right. But like the characters, they just go with the flow. The characters have a mythic quality to them that you can adapt into almost anything, which is why Superman's still around a hundred, almost a hundred years later. Yeah. Um, as much as DC is trying to prevent that from <laughs> continuing yeah. in these terrible films, but like it's uh, it's interesting to see how like, like you know even going back for like high school reunions, like a couple of my old teachers were like. You know, I used to get in arguments sometimes about how, like, you know, pop culture stuff is valid. Star Wars is val- a valid text. Like, it's not, you know, it's, um, you know, when, especially when you made the mistake of telling me that, like, Charles Dickens and, and Jane Austen were basically pulp novelists of their time. I'm like, Jane, Aust- Jane Austen is Twilight. Like, yeah. that's the same thing. It, it is. It, yeah. And, like, it's just because it's 100 years later and we think she's much smarter than, than they would have thought at the time because she uses words and, and grammar that we don't use anymore. And it's, it sounds, seems complicated to us, but really it was a soap opera. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's all X-Men is. X-Men is a soap opera. Oh, yeah, for sure. With more fighting. That's yeah. all there is to it. Yeah. And, like, you know, some of them was like, yeah, you were, I guess you were right. Like, there was, you know, that that is all that is. That, that is the niche that fills in the end. And, yep. like... Yeah, ne- never, never tell me that. Never tell me that something was popular, especially like Shakespeare. Shakespeare was the Michael Bay of his day. Yeah, I mean, he, he, it's you know, just a different society. At one point. of the most accurate like Shakespeare memes ever ri- ever written is probably the one you can get a shirt with it on. I think where he says, uh, "says Oh God, people are still reading Hamlet. I wrote that shit in like one fortnight." Yeah, <laughs> Shakespeare got to get paid. You know what? I, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, yeah, it's totally what Shakespeare would have yeah. said. Like, all right, let's get back to games. So yeah. Um, we, I think we just established the context for you guys, though. Yeah. Like, how quickly, especially now, like, back the 70s to, like, the 90s, not a whole lot changed. Look at what's happened in, like, 20 some, years I now. I mean, some changes. Like, I, I, it's interesting to me to even you watch the Star Wars trilogy and the hair. 
the yeah. hair from from oh, yeah, Star yeah, Wars yeah. One to Return of the no, Jedi. I'm just saying, like society in general didn't change all sort that. Much. We I still mean, had cars that guzzled gas, and like most of the tech was basically the same. Well, I think you had a big change in the in the 70s when unleaded became yeah, yeah. You know, mandated right, by right. law. Uh, the changeover from leaded gasoline was a big deal. Yes, um, <laughs> saved millions of yes. lives. Uh, you know, fuel economy, the compact car. I mean, you, like there were there were shifts. But I don't think you ever saw anything as rapid as the internet being introduced in the mid '90s, and then uh, what's ten, happened? And since? then ten years later, the iPhone, and yeah. from there, everything has just skyrocketed. Uh, we we've lived through a, a period of very rapid social change, um, in part because uh, I think one of the things you notice is like you've got all these cadres of people that believe crazy shit anti-vaxxers or flat yeah, earth yeah. people or whatever in the old days before the internet those people would never have found each other no no they wouldn't but have. now it's easy to find other people that have the same defect you do and be like oh we're all together now and no, they'd, they'd have a horse and a cart and they'd be out on the road selling elixirs yeah. echo chambers are much easier <laughs> to find now they are yeah that's that's true so and now children are dying so yeah. good job internet yeah um but like that's the big change, I think, is is these sort of places. It's accelerated. Yeah, and you see good sides of that too, or you know, oh, people sure. who have disabilities are able to find each other, yeah, or, yeah. or minorities, or or you know, the LGBT community finding ways to support each other, even yeah, though sure. they've never met each other. That kind of, I mean, that it's kind of thing. It's a tool. Great. It can it's be exactly. used for good. It can be used for bad. Yes. Also true of CG special effects, yeah. which people forget. <laughs> All right, let's let's go back to games. Uh, I I don't know if there's any industry that kind of. R- that kind of mirrors the advancements of society like games have. Because you had the first, I don't know, 15 years of games. They were 2D. They were pretty crude. They the, almost died. They almost died. The increments were very small. Then, like, once you hit, I don't know, I guess around 2000, mm-hmm. that's when you start seeing the acceleration of the uh, industry. Yeah, I think, 3D. I think the Dreamcast uh, bringing 3D into a, a realm where you look, where you didn't have to be told what it was. Yeah. You know, because there are, if you go back and look at some of that PS1 stuff, it's just like, what, that's a person? Right. Okay, sure. Yeah. It doesn't have eyes. I don't know what that <laughs> is. But the Dreamcast was the first time you looked at something, it's like, oh, I know what that is. Instantly, yeah. it looks like a cartoon of this thing. It was it also, I think it's the combination of that and the introduction of online. Yep. Uh, to consoles. So I mean, obviously, PCs have been doing that for a while. 2000 to 2010, just immense movement yeah. for games. What about the decade we're about to talk about? What about from 2010 to 2020? What do you think is kind of the overarching themes around the past decade? Money. Money. You just mean budgets? They're making more of it, or they're, or they're making more of it, spending more of it, asking for more of it. Like I mean, that to me, to me, the the budgets getting bigger is definitely a, a thing, um, especially in the rise of the HD era. Yeah, which. As we recall, as Sony said, begins when we say right, it does. Right, right. <laughs> oh, that company. Um, <laughs> but, like, to me, it's like the, the rise in budget, the rise in production value that accompanies it, the rising cost of the hardware, the rising cost of the games to some degree, and the rise in what they expect you to pay, especially in terms of the games as a service microtransaction situation. The shift in the bu- business model of how they get money out of us is probably the thing that, to me, defines the last 10 years the most. I would I would agree with that, but I would also tie into that that in the last 10 years, we've really seen the rise of indie games. So yeah. people who want to make games in the last 10 years have found that there's a number of ways to do it. Mm-hmm. It used to be either you get a job at Activision or some other publisher, or you just don't work in the industry. That, to me, is a big shift over the last 10 years. A guy in a bedroom now has the ability and the tools and the wherewithal and the resources to make a video game. However, I would argue that that is still part of what I'm talking about in the sense that that rise in cost and business model basically forced out the B-listers. That's what I was getting and like that's yeah. Then the indie yep. scene rose to fill that void. Absolutely. Yeah, there's that B-tier. I mean, what we lost lately, it seems what, like we've been getting a few B-tiers. But. Yeah, I mean, some of them do come back once in a while. But like, yeah. what, basically what we lost from like basically the PS2, what would have been PS2 shovelware is now made by people who care about what they're making. And you uh, also, I think, and I think that's a huge upgrade. Absolutely. And you're also buying them for 10 or 15 bucks right. instead of 40, 50, 60. Mm-hmm. So... I think in that, to me, is kind of the biggest shift. Anybody can make games now, and therefore the market is flooded with video games. Um, and I'll get to – we're going to make some picks here. When I get to some of my picks in a bit, I'm going to kind of compare 
software output between generations. So I don't want to kind of spoil uh, that conversation yet. But that to me has been like the biggest change because you got to figure by 2010, we already had Xbox Live and it had been out for years and had been iterated on and kind of was there. Like Mm. there haven't been that many changes or updates to Xbox Live or PlayStation Network in the last 10 years, other than PlayStation Network becoming a pay service and getting better. But what we had with Xbox Live 10 years ago is still basically what we have now. Some would argue you know, it was maybe better yeah, than. I, I would definitely <laughs> argue it was better. I like, mean, think about Xbox that. Xbox One is still playing catch up on what Xbox 360 had turned into by the end of its life. Yeah. So to me, this last decade hasn't really been about tech. Um, I agree that the developers have gotten better. I think that comes with having access to libraries and middleware. Mm -hmm. I think that's been a big shift. I mean, you can create pretty damn good looking games with like a team of like three or four people now. And that's a testament to the tools. But but otherwise, it's kind of been a stagnant decade for games. Don't you think? Not really. Think back. I mean, go back to 2000 to 2010. Go back Mm -hmm. from 1990 to 2000, 80 to 90. There are huge things that happen there. Yeah, but I mean, in terms of like revolutions and how we present like three, you know, 2D to 3D or that kind of, or, you know, the advent of online, all right. But like in terms of sort of honing these things and, and the, the big, you know, find, finding what a AAA game should be and kind of what that experience is expected to be, like I think they, a lot of progress has been made there or regression, depending on how you feel about that world these days. I mean, certainly Jim, Jim Sterling would have an argument to make there. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, the rise of the indie game is is kind of a honing of a totally different form of games. Like you know we we did I mean as much as they call back to like older games, like we didn't have anything like After Party or right. like yeah. Papers Please. They just didn't exist. Or, and, yeah. you know, it's, it's a it, you know the, the, it's the it's the melding of like retro ideas that that can still be done on an affordable budget plus incredibly high concept stuff that no one would have attempted before. That I think is sort of like one of the biggest hallmarks, and that that applies to AAA to some degree as well. If you take out the reasonable budget element, like. The fact that they'd even attempt something like God of War or Detroit Become Human, as much as I don't like that game, or um, or even Disco Elysium. Um, but like the fact that there that there's there's that feeling of wanting to attempt that, whereas I think the decade previous, you know, the aughts, so to speak, while there was a the revolution of the online thing, I don't think there was as much boldness in terms of what they were trying what people were trying to make and it was more about iteration on an existing format whereas i think mainly because of the indie scene you've seen so much innovation in terms of like what if we just did this what if we made this and you not- can do that now yeah absolutely yeah and i think you see you know, some of it bleeds through into the triple I, mean, I think i think you could lump dark souls into that world where like you know who else would make that game mm-hmm. other than From Software, other than these people that had – I mean, Kingsfield was basically the same game without as much refinement, and they sort of perfected the formula, and now it's bleeding into even tri- – you know, the Star Wars game took stuff from yeah. that. Like, that's yeah, crazy. Sure. That like is that, crazy. Is, yeah. that is sort of the biggest revolution, I would say, is sort of this gr- – from the ground up, uh, you know, delivering of new ideas – uh, that aren't be coming out of the major publishers that have the money to implement them on large scales, but they're coming out of these smaller developers that have the courage to try it. You yeah. know, and I think that was not an element of game development uh, on that that budget level before this decade. So that would be that would be my pick for like in terms of sort of like creative output, the most important. I don't want to use the term revolution, but sort of like shift, I guess. Yeah. Fire Native in chat brought up uh, DLC and microtransactions, but mm. if you've been a PC gamer for a long time, that's nothing new, really. There have been expansions, and living games have been a thing on PC for a long time. Yeah, and subscriptions for you know, going back to EverQuest and Ultima Online yeah. and stuff so like that. Yeah, so that's not that big of a shift. I think if you've only I mean, played I do think... console games all this time, oh, yeah. then yeah, it is. And I do think, I mean, I still do say like how they get money out of us and how they spend money is the yeah. most notable sh- change this last 10 years. Yeah. And I mean, Horse Armor was before the this decade, yeah. I mean, but it wasn't until this decade that it really hit critical mass. Yep, for sure. So that's kind of our overview of the last 10 years, at least what but we I do, think. The I do was. enjoy that EA finished the decade out by putting out a single-player game yeah. with no multiplayer that outsold its two multiplayer games yeah. from the same license. Yeah. It was very rewarding. Learn something, please. Yeah. It was very rewarding to see the financial results for yeah. Fallen Order. For sure. Yeah. I was like, hey, all right. Imagine if you let them finish the next one. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine what could happen. 
Absolutely. So Matt and I, now that we've kind of went over our impressions of the last 10 years, we are going to start picking our favorite games from the last decade. We have both picked our top five games. We're going to count them down five to one. And then once we get through all five games, we're going to pick our plat- our favorite platform from the last 10 years. So let's get to the games first, Matt. What is your number five pick for game of the decade and why? My number five pick is Batman Arkham City. Arkham City. Um, so I love the Arkham games. I would, you know, if you f- ask me a different day, I might say Arkham Asylum for this, yep. this part. That's why I said um, Arkham City. Because <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people debate what yeah, uh, the best are from the two. Ba- people go back and forth. And the real thing, the real difference is that, uh, I mean, Arkham Asylum is Metroid and Arkham City is Zelda. Um, Arkham, Arkham Asylum is set in a con- kind of a claustrophobic, like, maze of a place. Yep. All, all contained. You kind of go through and access more Metroid-ish. and more of it as you, as you gain more abilities and more gadgets. And that's sort of just how the Metroid thing rolls. Arkham City is a big open area. You go and do stuff in the overworld, but you also, to advance the story and advance side quests, you go to specific buildings, which are basically little dungeons. So it's the Zelda format. Yep. And basically, I think which one you prefer is a little more related to, A, what you prefer your game to be, and B, what you prefer your Batman to be. And for me, Batman is on the rooftops in the streets. I think a lot of people gliding, agree with you. Gliding through Gotham. Like, yeah. I mean, that, this, was, this gives me the Batman experience in a way that Arkham Asylum, while I would never really argue with someone who said Asylum was a better game, this is a better Batman game. I understand that, and um, I, I, you know, I remember Arkham Asylum was just a shock to the system. It was like, wow, a good Batman game. What the? Oh, hey, it's a great Batman game. And then City followed it up perfectly, and then Night dropped the ball completely. Um, which is why Night is not my pick here, even though it did give you a Batmobile. But a Batmobile is not the tank. Not a tank. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Where is the next one? By the way, it's been half a decade. Yeah, I don't um, know if that's going to happen, Matt. But this is the defining superhero game to me. Um, I weighed back and forth between this and Spider-Man because obviously we talked about, you know, is Spider-Man the new best superhero game? Yeah. Um, and given like kind of a year or so of distance from it, I still think Arkham City is the king. Okay. Um, and I have played this game three separate times. It's like picking between your kids, yeah, right? <laughs> but I, but it's like I played this game three separate times, 100 percent it every time. Different platforms. I played, you know, original Xbox 360, PC, and then the remaster they did on Xbox One. Um, and uh, you'll find that one of the recurring themes of my list is: Have I played it three times? Yeah, a lot of it's all, all the games on you. my list I've played through three three separate times. I did I did a lot of playtime comparison and that's probably uh, a good way to approach it if you're going to play a game three times you love it yeah. that's the bottom line so that would be that would be why this is kind of above the other arkham games and i just you know I, the fifth place in this is kind of a hard pick because you're like so many things could be fifth place yeah and i switched out my fifth pick literally like 10 times yeah and it came down to kind of the thing i wanted to most recognize and the thing that gave me the, like the warmest feeling and like the fact that there's a good batman game that i can go back to over and over like this one Voiced by Kevin Conroy, voiced by Mark Hamill, like you know, it's 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 great. Like they're probably honestly never gonna top this game, for me. Try to keep the faith. You never know. I love it, but like, I don't know. Like it's it's it's, it's pretty so good. perfect. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. Okay, time for my pick for number five. And uh, Matt did bring to my attention that this pick is cheating a little bit because it came out in May of. 2009 was that it may yeah so it's it's like 10 years old plus like a couple months yeah i mean i didn't find out it existed until i think spring 2010 yeah because they will anyway my pick is league of legends i should say that before we get into any more conversation and this was a pick where i kind of took the same approach that you did i started looking back over the last 10 years and i was like which games have I spent the most amount of time with? Now, that wasn't absolute for me. I didn't just say, okay, yeah. I played this game for X number of hours. That means it's going to make my top five. I It was a function of the two. How much time did I spend yeah. with it? It was basically like a way to sort of like, okay, what are the standouts here? Yeah. Like, what for are the me, things I've spent the most time with? The other thing I should mention, too, is this is not Matt and I declaratively stating these are the best five games from the last ten years. These are our favorite five games from the past. If we were doing a list... You know, top 10 games of 2010 to 2020, 
our picks would be different because then you're making a list for someone else. These are our picks for the last 10 years. So just keep that in mind as we go through these. I'm sure a lot of you guys are like, League of Legends, are you insane? I love League of Legends. I love it. I've been playing it for years and years. I never get sick of it. Um, I feel like I'm always getting better at the game. I feel like <clears throat> almost every time I play, I get humbled by somebody where I, th I think I'm good, and then I play somebody, I'm like, oh, I'm not good. <laughs> like, these kids are, are freaking good. Um, the amount of time that I've spent with it and the fact that I've never grown tired of it, and look, it is a multiplayer game, which is cheating a little bit, I guess you could say. Um, I don't think it's cheating. I get tired of multiplayer games in a day. That's true. So no, that's true. It, so I, I think if it if it holds like that, that still says something about it. And the other thing I would say to skirt around the fact that it's not exactly less than 10 years old is that when the game first launched, it was a shell of what it what like what it is now. I would argue it wasn't even really the same game. It had, kind of had the same premise, but they hadn't really figured it out yet, how it was going to work as far as team play and things like that. The game really, like, 18 months after launch is when it really kind of became what it was going to be. And obviously it became a, an international sensation, still one of the most popular games in the world. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason that, you know, 20,000 people will file into an arena to watch somebody else play this game. Um, I do wonder, though, you know, in the context of esports, if people are ever going to care about games that they don't themselves play. Because you think about sports, it's like mm -hmm. most NFL fans have never played football, will never play football. They still like watching football. I just wonder if League of Legends will ever get to a place where people who don't actually play it care enough to watch other people play I mean, I think part of the problem that esports is always going to have is that you are when you are watching it happen, you are not watching the people that are doing it. Like... One of the advantages that, like, say, the NFL or other sports have is that is the entire time you're watching the competition, you are watching these people. You are identifying with these people. You are ingraining Drew Brees' face into your That's mind. True. You are, you know, yep. you, you are associating these people with these actions and these feats, and you always have to cut away from the esports people, athletes, to to show the actual the game, game. Yeah. and that creates this disconnect and you think you know that's like a good point you think more of the character than you do of the person and i think that's it's very hard to kind of instigate the tribalism that requires you require a critical mass of to make a sports thing big um like even in the olympics when you don't really know who any of the people are but they're playing under that american flag i think that's kind of like one of the smarter things overwatch did was it, oh, yeah. it the organized city based by teams. City. yeah absolutely um I don't know if there's a solution to that. I do know that almost everyone I knew who worked esports production at Riot has left yeah, right now and gone yeah. on to do other things. So yeah. uh, I don't know if that means anything. But uh, at the very least, I think the inertia of this will keep it kind of top of that game for a very long time. Yep. Hey, I still if play. If someone can figure out how to make money broadcasting that, you you got a gold mine ahead of you. Yep, I still play. I don't get to play very often because I'm so dang busy with Sifted. But uh, if you guys want to add me on League of Legends, I am the real Dinfire. Yeah. Somebody else had Dinfire, so I had to go with the real Dinfire. So add me and we'll be friends, and maybe someday we can play together. But I love League of Legends. I've never grown tired of it. I've never found my interest in it waning. Uh, every time I feel like I'm starting to burn out, I just start trying to learn how to play a new champ. And every champ is so different that it just it becomes like you're playing the game for the first time all over again. So I'm a big fan of League. Uh, if any of you guys play, hit me up. All right, Matt, what is your number four pick for the best game of the decade? Number four is No Man's Sky. I Before you sent me your list, I knew this was going to make it. I didn't know where, mm -hmm. but I knew it was going to be on there. So uh, this is the exception to the finished three times thing because – Obviously, this game pretty much goes forever. Yeah, you don't really finish uh, it. I mean, yet. you can get to the center of the galaxy and reset everything. I mean, but you're still playing after that. Right. So my my shift on this is that uh, I have played it th on three separate platforms. So I've played it on PC, Xbox, and PS4. Uh, my, my most advanced save is on PS4 because that's the one I got first. Um, and I was playing it again this week because they dropped a new update out of freaking nowhere That's on crazy. Thanksgiving morning. Yeah. Like, Hello Games Thank is you. just a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of beasts yeah, over there. It is. And it wasn't a huge update. It didn't, like, change a ton of stuff, but it did let you upgrade your spaceship finally. That's a big deal. To, to higher, like, letter, letter grades, which means that I've had the same ship for – since the first version of the game, because I because there was that thing where you could go and and every time you found a new crash ship, there was a, a one it was one slot bigger. 
So I went and did that and traded up ships constantly until I got a full 48 slot ship that's also a fighter because I wanted a fighter. Nowadays, fighters can't have that many slots. So my, my fighter is like a weird ass ship now, but now and it was a C class because it was only it was it, I had it from before they in, you know implemented the C the, the letter grading of the ships, but now I can upgrade that ship. So I've got That's it upgraded awesome. to an A class. I'm saving up my nanas for an S class, so it will be as good as anything that you could have gotten recently. Now all I need is for them to let me paint the damn thing. <laughs> because it is, it's this. You've been dis- asking for that for it's this three dis- years. Disgusting, like <laughs> puke seafoam uh. green, and I would really like it to be almost any other color. But yeah. anyway, um, obviously, there's there's a lot of people that hated this when it came out. I did not. I played it a hundred hours or so when it first came out. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Even- yeah, for you, this game ended up absolutely delivering. Yes. Because even- the narrative around it when it came out was, oh my gosh, everybody was so hyped for this, and it's a total letdown. But that never really no, I mean, happened it's, with it's you. Not, it was not that far off what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, I think you had more realistic expectations. Yeah, of definitely. And then like it, they've made it better and better over time. Like I would say the game as it exists now is far better than I ever would have imagined it to, it to be. Like They've done crazy post-launch support on this thing. Uh, added all kinds of weird new, you know, the base building and the vehicles and the underwater stuff is great. And like, they just keep improving this thing and making it more interesting. They've added a lot more story stuff. There's like a 20, 30 hour story to it now, yeah. um, which is really creepy. I might add, like, I mean, ultimately like they, they delivered they a, the game that people unrealistically expected sorta, at launch. Yeah. And you can it's run crazy. around. And see, I just, I was playing yesterday and I ran into another player for the first time ever. Wow. Like they market, like they do market. Like there's a, like, I was looking at the galaxy map, and there was a player icon next to an, a system near me. And I knew I was near players because I was running into solar systems that had been discovered by other people. So okay. clearly I'd, I was running into a populated section of the galaxy. And so I went over to that that star system that had the player icon next to it, and I went and I landed at the space station, and there was another guy there. <laughs> First time I've ever seen that. That's crazy. Organically happened. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's all happening. Like, all the stuff people thought was going to be there, it's there now. Yeah. And, and then some. And, like and most then a of, lot. And, like, most of the updates, this new update, most of the changes are actually quality of life improvements. Like, yeah. tons of fixes, tons of things that make things easier. The inventory system is way less annoying now. Um, it's it's willing to let you stack. I mean, the, the change in inventory in the previous update, where now instead of being able to hold, like, 200 of, a, of an element, you can hold 9,999 of yeah. it because you need that much to build bases and stuff. Oh, uh, now that they've kind and, of yeah, built you, out the building. Yeah, you basically need the, that level of, of material to to build stuff out the way you want to. And they've they, now this new update expanded the storage cube. So instead of holding like five, they can hold like 25 oh, that's huge. Sl- yeah. slots. Like it's just, they've, they've made it more and more friendly to you. And but, but what I really still do is I turn the sound down and although the music is great, the, the, some of the music in this is really good, but turn the sound down, turn on some science podcast or something, just fly around, discover stuff, shoot stuff, gather things, you know, upgrade the ship. Like it's it's a, still a relaxing, interesting. I love still love exploring in it and looking around and seeing all the weird new shit that you can find, especially as as you get closer to the center of the galaxy, the planets get weirder, so you're not always seeing the same thing over and over again. Um, it's just it, you know, and I recognize that like kind of part of the reason I like it so much is it's just it 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 hits all my quirks, all the things that I it's just everything you love arbitrarily yeah. like. It, you know, I like space stuff, but I like it more arcadey than sim. Uh, I like seeing weird new alien planet things. I like just scanning shit. I, yeah. I, I, I love it. Is all that. Your, it's, it's it is right Matt up, Kyle the right video there. game? Absolutely. And it would be very again, it would be very hard for me to like legitimately recommend it to like a lot of other people unless they I knew they were had very similar tastes, but. Uh, I have spent somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 hours playing this game. Wow. And I'm still playing. Yeah. So uh, someone asked in the chat uh, what I would recommend in terms of platform. Uh, PC. No really? question. Interesting. PC. Um, well, because it gets the updates first and it runs a little smoother. Most of my play has been on the PS4 Pro specifically because it has the mo- most advanced save. Yeah. Like it's I someone have, you've been playing the most. Yeah. I, yeah. I, mean, I have a f- almost as advanced save on PC – uh, Xbox is harder because Xbox didn't come out until they did the big uh, the big multiplayer update last right. summer, and so obviously I don't have my ship isn't as cool. Like I you know I'm much it's it's actually I'm playing the the Xbox save is much more like what I'm supposed to be playing. Right. You know like I <laughs> like my my full 48 slot ships and the other two saves are like I'm probably not I'm really not supposed to have those. Yeah. But like I'm gonna still gonna take it. <laughs> well so hell yeah. It. 
I spent a long time digging up those crash ships. How much is this game now? Do you know? I don't know. I haven't looked in a long. I would yeah. guess it's like thirty bucks, but yeah, maybe it's still that's fifty. My guess. It goes on sale almost every time they update it. So yeah, you know, wait wait for the next because uh, Sean Murray said that like this is the this update this past week was like a small thing, and then they got another big one coming like Unreal. in a few months. So like wait wait a few months and get it cheap because they always put it on sale when that happens. When they put out some, a big new update. So yeah. it sounds like you're gonna have a chance to get it cheap with a brand new big update soon. Um, it really is a good game now. Like I, th- I think it's. Uh, I mean, it's not going to like change your mind if you hate survival stuff or you don't like running out of oxygen and having to reach. But they've made stuff a lot easier. One of the big problems, not problem, but one of the big tedious things about it was recharging the launch thruster. Yeah. So in the last, not this update, but the previous update, they added a technology that makes the launch thruster slowly recharge itself. Oh, thank God. Which and it's they're a- figuring it out slowly. So I have, so I have two <laughs> upgrades on my launch thruster now. One uh, makes it a hundred percent. I think. Uh, it's like a little more efficient, so it used to be like took a quarter of it's like a quarter of your your fuel to take off. Now mine takes twenty percent of my fuel to take off, and the recharge is slow. But I spend enough time scanning stuff and exploring around that by the time I get back to the ship, the twenty percent is regenerated. Oh, great! So I have not had to put launch fuel in my launch thrusters for like a hundred hours. It's great. Yeah, that'll change the game for you. So it's nothing. I do hope it, it, moving forward, not just the, not just Hello Games. I hope moving forward, one of the things that developers really start to embrace is the idea of like, if you can make it less tedious, do that. Yeah. Like just just help me out a little bit. You know, like yep. no one cares about all the weird little thing. Kojima, I'm looking at you. <laughs> like. All right. And you, Suzuki. While we're at it, I mean, really. <laughs> well, we'll like, get to him. We will get to him. All right, time for my number four pick for from the last 10 years. And my number four pick is God of War. Dad of boy. Yeah, dad of boy. Um, this, is real, this, this game is actually not on my list, and it hurts me that it's not on my list because it's so good. Yeah, I, I can understand why it's not on yours, knowing what the rest of your picks are. And I think once people hear the rest of your picks, they'll totally get mm-hmm. why it isn't there. It just wasn't room... But I think most people probably would assume that this game was going to be on my list. It's right in right. my wheelhouse. It's an action RPG. It's based on an old franchise that I resonate resonated with for years and kind of lost a little a little love for over time, but didn't didn't like the fact that I had lost some love for it and wanted it, my love for this franchise to be rejuvenated. They did that and then some. Uh, the game came out at a very vulnerable time in my life Mm. my dad and my sister had just been killed in a car accident and obviously the themes of this game between father and son it was almost too much for me to bear at certain points um i may go back and play it now and have actually just completely i just reinstalled it yesterday did you i think i think i'm probably gonna play it try to play it again soon i'm look i may go back and play it now and have a different perspective because as time goes on obviously wounds heal and i'm not at the same place mentally as i was when the game came out um, but I, you know, I, the game is still great. Uh, it, it, t- it was just the perfect everything. It was a perfect mix between an action adventure and an action RPG. It didn't go too far one way or the other. The game wasn't bloated. I never got to a point where, like, one of the games that uh, that ended up getting cut off the end of this list was, for me, was Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It was jumping in and out of my list like over and over and over again. And I'd pull it out because I'd be like, oh, that's a bloated game. It's bigger than it needs to be. Um, But it's the best Assassin's Creed ever, in my opinion, and I love the franchise. So this game to me was perfect. There was no bloat. It lasted the exact amount of time that it should have lasted. Yeah, I I don't know if I can think of another game that... That is exactly as long as it should be. It was perfect. And everything was perfect because the way all your upgrades were, like, it just was, it's just, to me, the perfect game. I I really struggle to find faults with this game. I know some people, if you're, like, a hardcore Dark Souls fan, I'm sure you may have gripes with the combat or whatever. But for me, this game was right. But you're wrong. I mean... (laughs) I'm a, I'm a Dark Souls fan. Yeah. I think combat in this is great. I'm just allowing for not everything to have... has to be Dark Souls. Like, You're right. That's, that's really the like, if I was you know in one of the things uh, kind of talking about various things for the decade. A couple people I know was like Dark Souls is overrated, and that like got a bunch of the Dark Souls fans that's that were all also in, also in the conversation freaking out. And I'm just like, you know what? I love Dark Souls. I played them all. I like them all. Um, but I think I agree. Like. I, it, it, not because the game is necessarily bad or has pro- problems with the game, but because I am so tired of hearing 
it's not like Dark Souls or Dark Souls did yeah, it better or the old. Dark Souls of blank. Like that's been ten years of that. I'm just like I'm done with it. Like it doesn't. Everything doesn't have to be Dark Souls. Everything doesn't have to be compared to Dark Souls. Yep. The other thing I liked about this game is it doesn't go like eight thousand miles down the rabbit hole as far as upgrades. There are enough upgrades, but you're not constantly mm. getting them. It's not one of those games where. Every five minutes you get a better weapon and you just have to trash your old one. You're allowed to build a relationship with the weapons that you use in this game and get good with them and master them. I I just really struggle to find any faults with this game. Um, the theme, there are other themes that I like. I would like more. Um, but other than that, it's, I don't know. To me, it's, a very, it's very close to the perfect modern video game. So there you go. That's my fourth pick. Matt, let's move to your third pick. Third pick. Which I'm actually surprised this is here. I really thought it might be number one for you. Oh, no, no. No? No. Okay. Number one is number one of the bullet. Okay. Um, so number three is uh, Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. And the reason I say this is because I know that you have literally spent hundreds of hours playing this game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I think it's a better game than some of the other. I mean, the reason I've spent that long playing is because that's how long the game is. Yeah, you know? I mean, that's part of it. Um, but again, it's part of the three club. I played it three times. I didn't even mean to uh, the last two times because um, I played it played it fully uh, when it came out on the 360, and then I got the special edition. I think I got it cheap on Steam at some point and just never played it. And be, but because I had it, because I was like. Probably like the Elder Scrolls collection or something because I wanted to play Morrowind again. Yeah. And then when the special edition came out, if you had the old edition on Steam, you automatically got the special edition. And when that happened, I loaded up. I'm like, I'll load up the special edition just to see what it looks like because I haven't played it in a long time. And then 80 hours later, I, (laughs) I was like, oh, whoops, I played it again. And then the exact same thing happened on the Xbox One X when I got the Xbox One X and I loaded it up. Uh, to see how the mod stuff worked and how, or the, how what kind of mods were available, because I was curious, like the mod, because you really need to mod this game, especially in the modern yeah, yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this game is almost ten years old. It barely makes it the, barely made the decade cut off. Yeah. And um, it's uh, and like so, I was like, oh, look at this mod. You can do this instead. So I got like a whole mod set up and did that. And I started like, oh, that looks great. That looks great. Oh, fuck, eighty hours later, it, was, it, it, yeah. it just it sucks me in and doesn't let me go. And the setting is amazing. And I wander through forests all day. And I. You know, I, I, people say, like, oh, the combat is bad, the air animation's bad, and the dialogue is weird, and the story... Me- I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I agree with every yeah. criticism of this game that pretty much exists, except I cannot stop playing the goddamn <laughs> thing. I actually bounced off Skyrim the first time I played it. I got about eight hours in and just stalled. And I wasn't... I didn't have to play it for coverage. Um, and I, I was like, okay, I just need to make sure I play mm-hmm. this before the end of the year for Game of the Year discussion. So I just kind of... I played it so I could talk about it on Invisible Walls, and then I put it away, and then I came back to it. Only after everybody else was like, what are you doing? Mm. You should be playing and finishing this game. And I was like, the, it was from people that I trusted and respected, and I was like, okay. like if Generally, if this person tells me I should be playing a game, I should be freaking playing it. And so I dove back in, and then I also understood why it was as popular as it was. But I would say this. When I talked about bloated games a couple minutes ago, this is one of the games that comes to mind. Oh, for it me. just doesn't stop. Yeah, you got to ignore the the radiant quests pretty early on, or you're never going to get anywhere. Yeah, it's um, so big. I mean, even when I go when I go through it, like the, you know the 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 subsequent two and playthroughs two and three, all I did was uh, main quests and side quests, named side quests. I never did radiant stuff because yeah. the radiant stuff is endless. Yeah, and doesn't get you anything worth doing. Um, and even with that. 150, yep. 200 hours. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's insane. It's, it's, it really is. tons and tons I mean, you can tons. see why it's taking so long for Bethesda to make yeah. the Elder well, Scrolls VI. Well, like, I would also hope that one of the reasons it takes so long, well, first first off, Todd said they haven't even started it um, when they announced it. Right. <laughs> um, that the tech doesn't exist yet, whatever the hell that means. Um, I mean, I'm sure they have the story written. Yeah, I'm sure they have, like, like that, pre-production, yeah. clearly. Um, they at least know where it's going to take place, I'm right. sure. Right, yeah. But, like, one thing I would hope they're doing is like you know there is a lot of content in Skyrim, but a lot of it is very samey and cookie cutter. I would hope that they're trying to find a way to make a lot of these things feel more like individual experiences. Like, like you could list me like elements of like half the side quests in this game, and I wouldn't be able to tell you which one was which. Right. Like yeah. it's all it all blends together in part because it's so long, but it also in part because. Uh, 
there's just not that much variety in what it is, what happens, and it's it's more of a an, of an obsession or an addiction at some point. I mean, I mean, it become when I played these games, this game, like every time, it became kind of a problem. Like it was just something I was doing all the time. <laughs> like, yeah, this is my MMO addiction. Is like I just I'm just gonna turn on Skyrim because it's like, well, I could like wash the dishes or I could walk through a pretty forest with snow on the trees. And well, like, I know like, which one I'm gonna it's do. It's like your League of Legends. Yeah, like that's what I do with League. Like if I ever do get a spare like 20 minutes, like and I don't have anything else I have to do, and I can actually take a breather, I'll play a game of League, you know? Mm-hmm. And this is a game that you pick up to play. It's like a therapeutic thing that you can go back to, and you always enjoy it, and yeah, it's important. Especially I, now that I can do the mods on the on the Xbox, and then one of the mods is to put in a ring that removes the weight limit. Yeah. That, that that's improves the game <laughs> Literally game changer. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, that's a great pick. And I think if, if we had 100 people do a list – of their favorite games from the last 10 years, my guess is it would appear on at least 75% of those Yeah, lists. I would think so. Yeah, I-, I definitely think that. I mean, it doesn't still sell for nothing. Yep, that's for sure. All right, it's time for my third pick. And this one maybe will surprise people for the opposite reason, but my third pick is The Witcher 3. Hmm. My game of the year, the year it came out, um... Again, though, this this game also feels a little bloated to me. Not to the extent of Skyrim, because Skyrim didn't even make my list. Obviously, it's a it's a vast to me. It's a vastly superior game to Skyrim. Yeah, I would say that in a number of ways. Oh yeah, I mean, I like everything. I mean, it, more it about has it. characters. The characters are animated well. Yeah, like, I mean, I love everything more about it. I love the premise. Yeah. I love the the characters. I love the world that's being built. Yeah. I like the combat, everything. It's a better game than Skyrim in pretty much every way. So for a lot of people, Skyrim is their RPG. To me, it's The Witcher 3. Like, mm-hmm. it's what I, it's not Skyrim. It's The Witcher 3. Um, polished despite its size. I mean, relatively polished despite yeah. its size. I mean, if you think about, compare it, again, compare it to Skyrim, how broken Skyrim was when it came out. The Witcher 3 had some issues, but nothing like that. Mm-hmm. Um, go- it's gorgeous. And I mean, nowadays it- it's pretty much pretty. It, Witcher Three is pretty solid. Yeah. Whereas Sky, even replaying Skyrim the last time, like last year, I was like, oh, this, that's still a problem, huh? Like yeah. this, this quest is still broken like this, and you need a, a user patch to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one thing I would say: the combat is not quite there. I am a. I put a big emphasis on gameplay and things like that. It's still good, but like God of War to me, I, I'd rather. Oh, I, yeah. I'd rather do the. But, I mean, Witcher Three's combat gets you there. It's I mean, it's yeah, not going to be pulled out enough. by anyone as the best combat yeah. ever. And I, I, but I do think it gets ripped on too much. Oh, I'd agree. It is. Yeah, it's not as bad as pe- no. as, as the haters say for sure. But I would argue God of War's g- gameplay combat is better. Yeah. But The Witcher Three does a lot of other things far better than God of War. Like as much as the the story in God of War resonated with me, the story in The Witcher Three is just better. There's just all there is mm-hmm. to it. There's more characters. There's more develop development of each one of those characters. There's a uh, there's more variety in the characters. Mm-hmm. It, it felt like once you met one person in God of War, you kind of met them all. Yeah. They and all this, kind of had the same personality. And this is kind of the opposite of Skyrim in that I can name you almost every character I encountered. In yeah, because you remember like they're all, all memorable. Even they're some all, of the bit players, like they're, they're not all voiced by the same five people. Yeah, <laughs> like you could just see. The amount of care, love, and craftsmanship, in all honesty, that went into The Witcher 3 for a game to be, like, I never, like, I'll say this game's a little bloated, but it wasn't like playing Skyrim. It never felt like a chore to play this game. Mm -hmm. There was times where I'm like, okay, I feel like it might be time to wrap this up and, like, and, you know, part of it is our jobs and we always have to move on to the next thing. But it wasn't like with Skyrim for me. Like, I didn't bounce off this game, I guess is the best way to put it. Like, I started playing it, and I enjoyed it right from the beginning, and I kept enjoying it. So that's my number three pick, The Witcher 3. All right, we're to number two now, Matt. Our top two picks for the best game of the last ten years. What's number two for you? Number two is Mass Effect 2. Yeah, and, and, and that we, one barely got in under the deadline too. And if you can, you want to consider this a pick for the whole trilogy, you can. But if we're picking individual games, Mass Effect Two is the best of the three. Um, I think most people would agree with you on that. Uh, I mean, there's a there's a resurgence in people that think one is the best, but I think that's a little crazy because one's gameplay is far behind the other two. It's just it's very rudimentary, kind of Unreal Engine standard. 
Uh, also, I have a slightly negative opinion of its gameplay because the last time I played Mass Effect 1 was on Insanity difficulty, which is just NPCs turning on invincibility and, like, you knock them over with a gun and you just empty an infinite ammo gun with no overheating into them <laughs> until their invincibility inv- stops and then they die. Like, yeah. it's, just, it's bad. Uh, I will say that Mass Effect 1 has the best villain. Saren is, yeah. is a great villain. Yeah, I'd agree with that. But Mass Effect 2... While the main the big, combat was the, the big, combat's way better. Oh my but god, also, it made a huge difference. The character development is better. So here's the thing about Mass Effect Two that I like, I love the most about it is Mass Effect Two got a lot of criticism for being sort of disjointed and that the main story was not a very strong through line. But that's because Mass Effect Two is not a single narrative story. Mass Effect Two is a short story collection. Mass Effect Two has a, a framing device, which is the 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 hunt for the the human Reaper, basically the, the you know the Reaper that you fight at the end and like that Cerberus sends you out to deal with at the beginning to gather your team for. But the meat of the game is a collection of short stories about that each focus on an individual character in your crew, and that is the brilliance of it. Is it it takes you through these stories that let you get to know these characters in a way that almost no other RPG ever lets you lets you see. No game ever lets you do that. No. Never. And like, these are characters that will stick with me for the rest of my life. I will quote Morden and and Thane forever and Garrus and all and like that's why Mass Effect 3 as much as people hate the ending, I think the ending is fine. Like it's yeah. it's disappointing again it's, an overreaction. But it's not yeah. like at the end of the world especially the update which helped kind of show what happened to people. Um, but also the entire um, the entire game of Mass Effect Three is a good is the end is an ending. It's a good you're saying goodbye to people constantly. And one of the reasons the endings, the goodbyes to some of these characters work so well is the groundwork they laid in two. Every great two is the heart of the story. Pay attention to any great television show that you really like, and inevitably there is an episode almost dedicated entirely to char- to specific characters throughout mm-hmm. each season where. This is why people got so attached to characters in Lost, even though the overall yeah. story of that show is nonsense. I mean, every great show does it, though. I mean, but, they, like, they have an entire episode where mm-hmm. you just spend it with that one character, and you get to learn their backstory, their motivations, where they're coming from. Yeah. And then from always, then on, you care about that yeah, character. I always compare it to uh, the episode, because I'm not a huge Lost fan, but I think uh, the constant... Yeah. It's one of the greatest That's episodes great of television episode, ever man. made. It is so good. And Mass Effect, I always compare Mass Effect 2's story structure to that. Yeah. It's like you're, yeah, you're, I can see that. Yeah. You're going through these things with these characters and, like, you know, Shepard's there with them and, and they're the only ones that know, kind of know what happened between them. And, like, it's it's great. And you come out of this really caring about everybody. Um, I know people that did actually go through the suicide mission at the end and lost characters, and I can't imagine letting that happen yeah. to any of these people. Like, it's it's really good. Um, Mass Effect Tril- Mass Effect trilogy is probably my favorite thing from last generation. Like overall, I you know I, I did total up all my all my saves. Uh, I've played through the full trilogy three times. The first game more than that to get more achievements. I have a total of something like seven hundred hours put into these three games. Um, Crazy. And Mass Effect Two is still some of the most memorable game storytelling of all time, and stuff I still remember years and years later. Um, I don't know what happened to that Bioware, but I wish they'd come back. Well, I'll say this about Mass Effect 2. I I hope they're back for Dragon Age 4 because I feel like we're running out of chances here. I'll admit I had problems finishing the first Mass Effect because, to me, the combat and the gameplay was was a huge detriment in that first game. Like, it was mm-hmm. bad enough that it bothered me and made me not want to play it. It's very rough. It like, is. It, like, the, the, the change in sort of the streamlining and refinement that happened in, in 2 – Utterly needed. It changed and everything. And that's why I always yeah. say, if you're going to remaster these games, you have to remake one oh, to yeah. bring its gameplay in line Absolutely. with two and three. Absolutely. Uh, I, Mass Effect 2 is my favorite Mass Effect game as well. So I'm right there with mm-hmm. you. All right. My second pick is not Mass Effect 2. It's kind of the opposite of Mass it Effect 2. It is the opposite of Mass Effect 2. Um, and I had to actually think for a minute whether this game was 10 years old or not. Yeah. Even, even for this game series, it has very little story. It does. <laughs> yep. Like, and and that game is Super Mario Galaxy 2. Come on, people. You know I'm gameplay first. You knew I had to have at least one example, in my opinion, of a game that is just sublime to play. Super Mario Galaxy 2 is absolutely that game. In fact, I went back and I was grabbing footage for this because we had no footage of this in on the TriCaster or anywhere. And it just, again, reminded me of how freaking brilliant this game is. Like... 
all I had to do was play a couple levels. And I was like, holy, like, I, like it was like you. I got hooked on it again. And I just started going through the game again because every, it's like every stage has at least one little piece or look, I mean, just watch this. Like, just look at what you're doing. Mm-hmm. It's insane. Like this is 3D Mario it, right in the wheelhouse of, of Nintendo. This is when they had the best team working with the mm-hmm. best ideas. And also because, like, this is sort of the game made up of all the ideas that they cut or weren't able to realize in the first Galaxy. So yeah. it was, it's, I mean, this is sort of like Mario Galaxy expert levels. It is. Yeah. And like, but uh, they, they also, like... They made the overarching hub world far more mm-hmm. enjoyable and far more functional. Um, you had already got kind of the sus- spherical worlds in the first game, but they just kind of t- cranked that up to like 20. I mean, right? It, just watching this B-roll, it's insane what's happening right now in this game. Like, technically, to create these these circular worlds. Like, I just read like a – I think it, we curated something on Sifted recently where they were talking about how – they went from Super Mario 128 to this. Mm-hmm. Because if you remember that demo of, of Mario 128 for GameCube, I believe it was. Yeah. And it was just a round world that had like 128 Marios running around interacting with each other. Well, that tech was what borne out Super Mario Galaxy. Um, and I look, I respect anyone's opinion if someone will say the first one is better than the second. I'm not going to argue that. Yeah, honestly, like that's a coin flip a lot of time for me. But I, I feel like this is the more... Uh, I would, I guess I would say more mature of the two. Not in the sense that like it's for adults or whatever, but right. because they nailed the format, they knew what it was, they knew what it had to be, and they were allowed. That you know now the developers could just design. It's a they lot like just, Mass Effect Two. Yeah, the first one was great, had some rough edges. In the second one, they basically smoothed those all out and delivered a better overall product. The other caveat too is that the su- the first Super Mario Galaxy did not come out within the ten year limit, so right. this also worked out well. But there's just an element of like. You know, Mario Galaxy 2 is just masters at work. Oh, yeah. This is like the pinnacle of them at their height of their power. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is the pinnacle of 3D platforming. It really is. Really. This, is this is the best 3D platformer ever made, in my opinion. Um, it... I mean, I, I, would, I would agree with that. I mean, I would I wouldn't argue very hard against someone who said the first one was. Super Mario 64? I Or the first Galaxy? Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, like, yeah. I mean, there's just an ima- a level of imagination on display here that is very hard to match and i don't think was matched in odyssey i think i gave the first galaxy on game trailers like a 9.3 and the second one got like a 9.8 or something like Mm. choose your poison like either one is amazing this one just happened to come in under the 10 year limit so it is my pick for number two and it is time for you to make your and i think everybody already knows what your pick is going to be you Unless have, they yeah. have not watched Game Face very much. You're doing uh, pretty unfamiliar. Yep, but it is, our, it is our time to pick our best game from the last decade. Matt, what's yeah. your pick? And like I said, number one with a bullet, which are three. Yeah. Um, no surprise. Um, I don't. I think people in chat, as soon as they heard this topic, they knew what game was you're going to pick. They knew that if they hadn't seen this come up yet and they already seen No Man's Sky come up, they probably thought this must be number one. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this is this is my favorite game of the last ten years by a long march. Like this was not this was the first one I wrote down when you told me to make the list. I'm like, okay, Witcher's number <laughs> one. There, yep. And we'll just have to decide who fights it out for second place. Um, it's, I mean, you pretty much said a lot of it already. But it's like I love the characters, I love the world, I, I love being there, I love having a quest book full of stuff to do. I like hunting things down and figuring out how to beat these weird monsters and like. I like that all- everything is worth it in this game. Yeah. Like. You do something and you never feel you never get there and you're like really mm-hmm. like I went through all that for this like the payoffs are always worth yeah. it and how like they the, the side quests in this game are better than a lot of games main quests oh it's insane like, the, like you just run across some random person in a hamlet and they have this whole like world mm-hmm. going on it's, and like things just things where like you're it's like even if it's just like it comes out starts out like a hunting contract like a Witcher contract you're like okay I'm gonna track some some footprints. And it turns out, like, oh, it's this horribly <laughs> tragic thing, and there's this yeah. thing's happening, and oh, it's actually not monsters, it's people, and they were doing this, like, weird human trafficking thing, and now you got to go back to the village and figure out how they're getting them out. Like, there's, there's so Best much... Best quests of the last yeah. decade. Or, right like, now. the side quests where, like, you start out by trying to figure out where this guy's daughter, like, wife went, and in the end, you're, like, resurrecting a, a dead, like, prematurely born child to carry it through the... 
like <laughs> phantoms trying to kill. I mean, yeah. and like I mean, it's ju- it just goes places. You and might- I think the world helps. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah the, the world where it's like you know, and it's, it's the same as like with the book to some degree. It's a little different, but like it it it's a world where like basically like fairy tales are real and like but they're all like based on like horrible things that are even more horrible than the original horrible things in the fairy tales (laughs) and it's like you recognize a lot of elements from like you know classic folklore especially eastern european folklore because it's made in poland um a nice reminder many times that eastern european folklore is crazy yeah um like and they just nail they make it their own but they still keep it recognizable like you recognize like little things and like that that's it's in the books as well like one of the first stories he meets what is basically the beast from beauty and the beast but it turns out that he loves being a beast yeah. and like he's convinced the, the local villagers he doesn't want to change back no yeah you convince the local villagers to just sort of deliver a new like nubile young girl to him every few years and like they just sort of hang out and she cooks for him and like yeah. sometimes they get along sometimes they don't it's like like he's, he's and and Geralt's like I should probably kill you because you're a monster and then like he says I don't remember what the guy said but he says something that gives away it's like oh there's one I didn't like so I killed her or something he's like oh you're a monster gotta kill you yeah um, but it's like those twists on sort of like these you know, the idea is sort of like this is the horrible real life event that the fairy tale you know is based on, right? And has come down, and to that you your parents of years didn't through. read out. Yeah. They they skipped those pages in the book. Yeah. So <laughs> stuff like that is great, and like yeah. it's, but it's also got a great sense of humor. Yeah. It's got you know, it's got levity. You're also sure. very funny. Like even this trailer, where like you know, it's called you know, this is this if these events don't happen in the in the game. This trailer, but it is mentioned in the game when you run into Lambert later. He's like, I heard about that. You said like, he's like, he's like. Like you only kill monsters, I am killing monsters. He's like, I don't know. It's just what popped into my head. He's like, <laughs> like, like it's a, there's yeah. a there's a thing late in one of the DLCs where it's sort of like wrapping the whole game up, and like at some point it says something about like you know he seems like he could get lost lost you know on the Witcher's path forever or something, and Geralt just looks right at the camera and <laughs> grins at you, and you're like, yeah, like, it's, it's like there's some great That's stuff great. in there. It's a great game. I mean, it's the, it's also hard to find. Faults with right, and yeah. the lead writer of the of the best quests in the game is, is the uh, is the narrative director for Cyberpunk. Yep, um, so which I, bodes very well. I mean, that is what I'm the most excited about Cyberpunk is yeah. like the people that made these quests and made these characters are going to be playing this new universe, and who who the hell knows what we're going to get from that? Yep. So, um, yeah, I play yeah, again. Played through this game three times. Didn't intend to play through it uh, the second time, the third time. <laughs> Actually, I just loaded up an Xbox One X to see what it looked like uh, with HDR. And, and away uh, you went. There it goes. Wait, room. There we go. Not going to happen with the Switch version, I'm guessing. No, I will probably <laughs> never play that. I don't think that um, one's going to One, like if they, if the Switch version for some reason one day came down to like a, like it was a Black Friday deal where yeah. it was like. 10, 10 bucks, bucks or whatever. I yeah. might get it just to keep my Witcher collection complete because I do have a, a little shelf that's just Witcher stuff. Uh-huh. Um, I have a lot of versions of the games. Um, but, yeah, I don't. I, I didn't bother with that just because I've already done it three times yeah. and they all looked better than that. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, I don't know why you would. All right. It's time for my number one pick for the best game, in my opinion, of the last 10 years. I think people right now have no idea what game I'm going to pick. I wouldn't have guessed that. Actually, very quickly, how about a couple of you guys in chat guess what you think my number one game is going to be? You know four games I've already taken off the table. So very quickly, type into chat just your guess off the top of your head what you think I'm going to pick for number one. Because I'm w- just curious. I was pretty surprised. Yeah. Minecraft from Fire Native. Shenmue 3 from Erebus Jones. <laughs> just, the, now they're making... Bloodborne. Now you now make you, a joke. Now you're making... Uh, <laughs> SJD Swan Now Bloodborne. you're making the jokes. Senron, you... they're, go, they're picking all the games I hate. Sleepy Dogs. NHL 94. Okay, that's about 20, year, 20 years old, but whatever. <laughs> Dead or Alive Extreme 3. It, I'll say this. You guys are awesome because you actually do remember all the games that I hate. <laughs> <laughs> like you guys are like encyclopedic in your brains. You remember like every game I said I didn't. Horizon like. Zero Dawn's another game I I was sad to not be able to get on there, but it just okay. Horizon be in the top ten. Horizon Zero Dawn, Superman sixty four, haha, texture glitch, Zelda. I guess he's assuming Breath of the Wild, Black Ops four. That's not a bad pick. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater two. Is that that's over ten years? That's old. a long. Yeah, very that's, old. that's too old. Three came out with a GameCube, so yes. Uncharted 2, GTA, GTA 5, the ending for Mass Effect Was Uncharted 3. 2 this decade? I don't believe so. I don't, remember, I don't think it was. It's close. But Not on the edge. But also, Ed Rock the Truth. Like, I don't know if um, you've been following me for a long time, but you might be because 
Uncharted 2 was a very heated discussion on Invisible Walls at one point between, I think it was Marcus and I. So he may be remembering no. that discussion where I defended Uncharted 2 to like the death. I Bayonetta, like, Luigi. Uncharted 2 is definitely my favorite in that series. Uncharted came out in October of 09. Yep, so it just slid in. It's, it's as good a pick as League of Legends because League of Legends is a couple months over. Okay, Fallout New Vegas. All right, so those were all your choices. I will say this. One of you did get it right. Mm-hmm. One person did guess right. And that person was Zelectro uh, when he chose Grand Theft Auto V. So GTA V is my favorite game of the last 10 years. Reviewed this at Game Trailers. I think I gave it a 9.7, I think is what it came out to ultimately, um, which I guess it all, in the end I actually gave it a score lower than uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2. Um, but when I was working on this list, I mean, I don't even take into consideration the fact that it's the best-selling game ever or that it's released on two platforms and it's the best-selling game on both platforms. That was irrelevant uh, to me. My pick for this was just purely based upon what games I thought were was were the best over the last 10 years. Um, what I realized while putting together B-roll for this is that Grand Theft Auto V offers more flexibility than I believe any other franchise will ever be able to offer. Because of its setting, uh, because of its parodic nature, is that a word? How do you say parody, but... Parodic. Parodic, is that right? Because of its parodic nature, um, you can just do anything. Like, there's missions in this game where it starts out, you're riding like a scooter... Um, then you stop somewhere, and then you hop in a cop car, and you become the cops. And you pull somebody over, and you steal their supercar. And then you drive the supercar to this place. Like, because it's set in present day with modern technology, and it's snarky, and it's open world, and its tech is awesome. The game, you just, you never know what's going to be around the next corner. I looked at all the other games that I played. I would say Mario Galaxy kind of falls into that category as well, where it's just everything is almost unexpected. Like, you you play a game like a God of War or a Skyrim or a Witcher, you kind of know what you're going to get. It's like either a medieval setting and there's people who are having problems with their crops or their animals or some dude who stole from them. In this game, it can be anything. And what what I found is I started looking back across, like, all the other games that have come out over the last 10 years, and I was like, I can't think of another game that allows me to do that and does it so well. Also, I would argue another game that wraps up exactly when it should, yet it's still huge. You are getting your money's worth for it. And then you start thinking about like GTA Online, which when the game came out was kind of an afterthought. It wasn't even there at launch. And then it came along a little later, and it wasn't exactly what people kind of hoped or thought at first. And now it's just this behemoth. Like Rockstar has kind of mastered the art of the game as a service with this game. Um I just think we're going to see shadows of this game in other games for a long... We already have been. And we're going to continue to see the shadows of this game for a long time to come. Um, There's a reason, and it isn't why I picked it, but there is a reason why this game is the best-selling game ever. uh, Because it can resonate with such a wide group of people. Like, even my wife enjoyed watching me play this game. And there are very few games where I can say that it hit her on that level where she just enjoyed watching me play it. Um, the humor is something that we don't get in enough games anymore at like period. Like there just aren't enough games that have humor. Like a lot of games you'll have a joke here or there, but this game made me belly laugh over and over and over again. I just feel like it offers, even though open world games are like kind of passe now, it still to this day offers stuff that other open world games aren't doing. So I love the heck out of it when it came out. I still love it. I love firing it back up to play it to grab footage. Um, It's almost 10 years old. It doesn't feel dated to me at all. Um, I think a little bit kind of in the same vein as The Witcher 3, some of the combat isn't where I would hope it would be. And I'm still completely flummoxed as to why Rockstar cannot nail combat. Like even in Red Dead, I still felt like it wasn't exactly where I wanted it to be. I don't know why Rockstar doesn't just hire somebody to handle that for him. It's like the missing link 
It has to be a choice at this point. You think? Yeah. I mean, maybe they try to keep it so simple so that just anybody can play it and it's not too complicated. I don't know. Red Dead Redemption 2 is very complicated. Like, there's so much The game itself was? Do. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. In this, not so much, though. This is no. a little bit more pure. Um, this is like get in the car, go on your mission, deal with a bunch of crazy people. The writing is great. The voice acting is great. All the production values are all top notch. I cannot wait for Grand Theft Auto 6. Um, even though but this you're game, gonna. yeah, I know I am. Uh, but and even though this game came out so long ago, it is still my pick for the best game of the last ten years. So there you go, Grand Theft Auto Five. One person did guess. I honestly didn't think anybody would, because again, it's been away so long. I and mean, we've talked negatively about GTA Online a bunch of times on the show, which probably threw a couple people off. But uh, but yeah, that's my pick for the best game of the last decade. We have one more bow to put on this package before we move on. I don't think GTA V would make my top 20. Really? No. I, wow. I was horribly disappointed. In, although I did play it twice, but not three times. Three times. <laughs> that was it. the deal breaker. My main thing is I think I think it's very obvious to me that they cut all the heist stuff out of the middle of the game. To sell it. To make it a, a DLC stuff. Like, they spend so much time introducing you to like building your team and doing uh, planning the heist and do all that, and they never do it again. No, you're right. Yeah, that's like, true. It's, it's so obviously... D- it's so, like that's the main thing I think I would disagree with is the idea that it ends when it should because that game clearly was supposed to have a big middle chunk where you're doing heist stuff and it just all went away. Yeah, but I, I, well, I can't know that, but I I would guess that I would find mm-hmm. the game bloated if that was there. Maybe, I, I, but I also think I feel like that would be fun to get lost in for a long yeah. time, and then like as long as you maybe had the ch- the opportunity to like say okay, enough is enough, let's do the final heist after yeah. a certain point. Um, I also feel like Franklin gets lost. About halfway through this story, like they don't really do yeah, much more with him. I after can see a while. that perspective because Trevor and Michael become Michael's the Trevor main is, character. Michael's really. the main character. Trevor brings up the rear. He's, yeah. he's kind of like the primary character well, for Tre- the last. Well, act. Trevor, Trevor's the kick in the rear. Trevor's yeah. the motive, the thing that causes everything to happen. Yeah, like he's the motivator. Yeah. Um, but Franklin, I feel early on, Franklin's very, a very like a, a viewpoint character, almost to see how crazy these people are. Yeah. But then, like he, just, you just sort of move away from Franklin. He doesn't really do anything. Yeah, he was kind of like the litmus test. Like you needed yeah. the straight guy to realize how insane. Right. Right. These other people are. Like you needed someone g- grounded to be able to say, like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, like, but, j- again, just the fact that there's a game that's doing that is a big deal. Mm-hmm. I mean, most games narratively do not. And it is still pretty impressive. Like, you know, you forget, obviously, this is the, the updated you know, re-release version, but, like, this is a last-gen game. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's been out this long, and it still yeah. left a big impression on me. So, GTA Five, my game of the last decade. We have one more thing to tighten up, and that is Matt and I are both going to pick – our favorite platform from the last 10 years. This was really tough because there's a lot of things to take into consideration. I'm going to hold off on explaining kind of my mental process before you or until after you've made your pick. So mm-hmm. what is your pick for the best platform of the last 10 years? Uh, my pick is uh, still the Xbox 360 because um, I think uh, Xbox nailed – really nailed the online environment better than any console before or since. Uh, they're still playing catch up with this thing in terms of interface and and online features, really. And uh, this is the system that I played the most online stuff with and had like kind of an regular group playing with and like did all that with. And it just all went away in the in the new generation. Not not in part because people like, you know, got different lives and moved moved away and it wasn't really the same group dynamic anymore. But also because the people that were there ev- almost every night playing on the 360 with me didn't like playing on the new systems because the chat didn't work or we kept dropping out yeah. or we wasted 40 minutes trying to get everybody to be able to hear each other in party chat. And, like, this didn't work. And now, now that didn't work. Well, now the server's down. Like, it was just not the same experience. And while online is not – and, you know, multiplayer is not very important to me now, it was then. And, like, of all, I think, the – eras of gaming I'm going to look back on and miss it's probably that 360 era where it w- I had that regular group playing yeah. like all the stuff with because that's just never going to happen again like you know you're never going to be that age again you're never going to have that situation again you're never going to have those kinds of games again um and that's that yeah it's and true. uh so you know so I kind of it's kind of irrelevant to like technology or what games were even released the the point was like I had the best time on culturally a ni- on a nightly basis yeah culturally on a nightly basis playing on the 360 yep and I would argue that a lot of the games I have on, you know, look at you know my top five here, I would consider probably all those games better than anything I had on 360. Yeah. 
uh, with that maybe two or three exceptions. I mean, obviously, Mass Effect Two was a 360 game, but like, you know, when when I look back fondly on the things that you know, I, I it was a it was a less impersonal hobby on the 360. That would probably be what I'd say about it. I would say, okay. Should I make my pick first before I... Yeah. Okay. So my pick is actually the PlayStation 4. Um, we had kind of had a discussion about this, like what w- what's the best console ever? And we both agreed it's probably the Xbox 360. And that was only, mm-hmm. what, a couple months ago, I think. Yeah, we, it was we, not, we discussed not too that. long ago. So you're probably wondering, Shane, why aren't you picking it? And I guess well, I took I'll, this a little more literal. Well, I also like... You know, I agree I, with everything you just said. I recognize that like, when we're talking about this decade, we're talking about the, kind of the last three years of the right. 360. Like, See, it, that's what know. I'm saying. I took it more literal. So I was, literally looked at the last three years of the 360 and then the whole, basically the whole lifespan. Of the, it's not a fair comparison, but that's kind of how I looked mm-hmm. at it. To me, it was more about the shifting of the era, the end, the end totally of what the 360 was, totally and the dawning that. of this new thing. I mean, I would, you, you know, I would probably argue... As a whole, this generation is the best generation. It probably is. Um, so I started doing some comparisons. The PlayStation 4's library is absurd. Yeah, it, that's what I, <laughs> I realized. So I started doing some research because I, I basically felt the same exact way you did. Like the nostalgia culturally for me with the Xbox 360 is almost overwhelming at times. It like almost makes me feel emotional because it was – like the best part of my career, my, t- my time at G4, the end of my time at G4, all my time at Game Trailers, all the people I was working with and met during that time, just amazing. Um, and you're right, all those people playing games with them every night on 360, it was just, mm-hmm. it's something I'll never forget. It's kind of like, like how I, th- I talk about how like, you know, one of the reasons I am you know, was upset and still so upset about my cat dying was she was with me through all those same years. Yeah. My late 20s and all my 30s. The G4 era, the tech yep. TV era, all, you know, that period of time, all that stuff, that period, of your, you know, and no matter how much you, you know, get another, another, if I get another cat that I love, whatever, it's never going to be the cat that lived through nope. that with me. And the 360 is kind of a similar thing. The 360 is part of that era that can't really be replicated. Yeah, it's like, you know, during the 360 era, my career took off, like just so many, I got married, like just so many yeah. good things happened to me during the Xbox 360 era. And so I absolutely feel you. But when I started looking at it, and I'm like, the last couple years of the 360 were not great. Um, you got to realize that, like, 2010 had already been out four years. Like, mm-hmm. it was at the end of its run by the time you get to 2010. Five years. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, it'd be five years. So mm-hmm. it was already being phased out, basically. Yeah. The last Although couple that, years. It, it, it lasted three more years. Yeah. It was, it was a... No, it did. But... Then I start thinking about everything I've got on PlayStation 4 because we're getting the whole life cycle of the PlayStation 4. It, it, the place, for me, the PlayStation 4 wins because of the way it fell into the years. Um, I would still say probably in my heart, I, I care about the Xbox 360 more. But then I started digging through the numbers. And to date, there are 1,200 games available to, for the Xbox 360 to date. There are already 1,100 games available for PlayStation 4. So to your point about, oh, my God, like the software has just fallen down like the rain, you're absolutely right. We're only in, what, the fourth year of PS4 now? Five? Is this the fifth year? Hmm, no, this is six years. Oh, this is six? It came out wow. in 2013. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, six years. So 360 had an extra three years on PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 4 already has as many games. Um, and then I start thinking about the exclusives for each one. Like those last three years on 360, that was when we were really in the, mm-hmm. the other, Gears, Halo, yeah, Forza. Well, Gears, like, Halo, Forza. The other thing about 360 is like there were a lot of multi platforms that might as well have been exclusives because That's of true. how badly they ran, they ran on, on PS3. They ran on PS3. You're right. That's so true. like it was just yeah. sort of like there's only one choice. You know, the PS3 was almost a Nintendo console. Yeah. Like, it was like I play the Sony exclusives on this. That's pretty much all I did. Yeah, that's the way it was for me, too. I I never really built a relationship with my PlayStation 3. No. Never. I played all my multi-plat stuff on 360, and I used my PS3 to play. 360 or PC. Like, that was, was, I have almost nothing multi-plat. If I could play it on another platform, I did. Yep. So, I would not say that PlayStation 4 is my favorite platform of all time, but just in that 10-year period from 2010 to today, I feel like it was the best console. So there you go. The last decade in video games, according 
to Game Face. Are you playing Mac? Get out of here. <laughs> you know, I didn't even know this, but I was, I was digging through my PlayStation 4 because I added an external hard drive So because I was kept running out of room. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, I can reinstall. That's why I reinstalled God of War. Because I'm like, oh, I got room to put God of War on. I can play that again. I was going through my like, you know, my uninstalled library. If I, I own Knack. I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even know. I don't even know why I have Knack. You probably but it's there. got it from. Are you they... playing Knack? Get out of here. <laughs> was that part? Was it ever a part of PlayStation Plus? It probably. I, think I can't. It was. I cannot imagine. There's another way I would have yeah, ended up. I don't with think that you game. ever bought it. I'll no. say that. <laughs> I don't think you ever plugged down cash for it. Uh, but anyway, there you go. The last decade in video games. Although, wow, like that that launch, you know, video there, not tremendously good in helping our case. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Knack and Killzone Shadowfall, not, <laughs> it not illustrating what we're talking about. I mean, really. PlayStations very rarely have good launches. That's true. I mean, their oh, their yeah. launch lineups are always kind of crap. Yeah, I mean, I, it's better than threes. Yeah. Where where you got a firework simulation. Yeah, firework simulation. And <laughs> oh, wait, that's PS2, wasn't it? It resists. Yeah, Fanagraph. Yeah. Fan, Fanavision was yeah. PS2. But uh, you had, um, you know, you had Resistance. That wasn't bad. Yeah. But the thing I got assigned to review for the PlayStation 3 launch was that stupid Gundam game, which is still one of the worst things of that gen, I think. There's some people that like Knack. For instance, um, Zekalia Seldom in our chat says Knack is a good game. There's people who like it. I'm yeah. not one of them, but. Nothing so terrible that somebody on the internet won't love it. Yep. All right, we got to move on because we have about, and I didn't think we'd be able to make the full time. We're going to make it easily. Uh, at this point, I'm going to have to rush through these last handful of topics to make it by the end. All right, next up is Shenmue 3. Uh, we've talked about this game ad nauseum on Game Face over the last month. Uh, Matt and I both kind of bounced off it. I still have not gone back to it. I was saying earlier, remember how I said... I haven't actually turned it on since we talked about it either. So remember how I was saying, you know, I, I paid for it with my own money and I regret it. And you were like, oh, I'll just go trade it in. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, Matt. Oh, there's no trading in Shenmue 3, my friend. Oh, no. Oh, no, the price has hit rock bottom. It's You can buy it used for like $25 at GameStop. You can buy it new for $30 from GameStop. Wow. Is it's that only because of the done. sales or is it? No. Like it's just they bought a ton of them and they can't sell them. So hmm. there's no value left in Shenmue 3. I'm just keeping it. <laughs> so maybe someday I'll return to it. Probably not. It can, uh, can serve as a warning. But the bottom line is that the game has tanked financially and horribly tanked. Um, I don't know that it matters all that much because they already got the money to make the game. Yeah, that's what I'd say is like I can't imagine like ninety percent of the people who wanted this game didn't already put their money in for the Kickstarter. Right. Yeah. And but I mean the funny part is But it's bizarre that, that so was many only copies, like three million dollars or whatever. But it's bizarre that so many copies ship to retail. I know. Like it's everywhere. It is. I thought this game would actually be like mildly difficult to find. I thought it would be out like like Greedfall or something. You they know, didn't like, market it. Where I'll it's say there that. if you were looking for it, but there's like two of them, you know. But there's, I was at Best Buy on Sunday and it was just, there's stacks of them. Yeah. Like, why would you think this game would, I mean, even what do you mean fan, why? There was people flipping backwards out of their chairs when it was announced. Like, all that stuff adds up. Those, those buyers make, at GameStop see if that. If you're crap. stocking your shelves based on Huber's reaction, you deserve what you get. Well, they can't really stack shelves anymore based on pre orders because no one pre orders anymore. That used to be how they made their orders. They'd look mm. at how many, that's why publishers used to care so much about pre orders because that determined how many copies GameStop would buy from the publisher. Mm. So, now that nobody pre-orders anything anymore, because why? They don't have that barometer anymore to kind of know how a game's doing. They can, there obviously are some services out there. Adam has a service that should help them with that kind of stuff. There's stuff like Game Tracks from GameSpot that should help. But inevitably, you're going to get you, fooled every once in a while. In this while. case, you could have asked the gardener. Or you could have asked us. <laughs> like, I'll, yeah. I'll take... 30, $30, Even as a giant fan team. of Shenmue, I could have told you this was not going to burn up the charts or anything. Yeah, I um, I'm not surprised that it didn't sell. No, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Like I kind of suspected it wasn't going to sell because, like you, I knew that the people who really wanted it paid for the Kickstarter. They already mm-hmm. put their they already put their skin in the game. There is here's the, here's what I really want to talk about though because I don't think the fact that it's not selling great is a surprise to either one of us after we basically trashed the game on game face me more than you I will I will admit I definitely disliked it a lot more than you did yeah um, you actually found some redeeming value in it yeah, I, but the fact that I, I struggle di- to find any the fact that I disliked it at all is notable is a pretty big deal because I was a big deal and I on the 
you know, one of the comments in one of the articles on Sifted, I did say it blows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, I mean, I do not think it's good. Yeah. But I, I think there's a, there's a couple of things you could fix that would make me think it was fine. That you'd want to play it yes. and finish it. Um, well, over the last, like, week, it appears that a, uh, the Shenmue Defense Force has come out uh, to defend the game, saying that, that, frankly, that I'm wrong, that the game isn't terrible. Um I think they're crazy. I think that there are, look, with a lot of art, quote unquote, it is open to interpretation. One person can look at something and say, that's great. Another person can look at something and say, I hate that, it's terrible. Paintings, music, I can go on and on. There are certain elements of video games that either are broken or they're not broken. And this game has just dozens of elements in it that 99 days out of 100 are considered broken by every gamer on the planet. Like, there are things wrong with this game that are objectively wrong, that just, they're they're not the ideal way to do things for a reason because we've learned over the last 20 years that nobody wants to consume gaming or games that have those sort of features in them. So to me, using the their art and so nobody's right or wrong when determining whether a game is good or bad sure like the story in the game okay i'll give you that one person can read a story and think it's the greatest thing they ever read another person can read it and think it's tripe i give you that there are certain technical elements of video games that are bad and there's no debating whether they're bad or not it's accepted logic that certain things have been rejected by players for the last 20 years and they don't want them because they feel they're bad and a detriment to enjoying a game. And Shenmue 3 is loaded with them. Loaded with them. This game has so many parts of it that we rail every other game for. And now all of a sudden the people who who want to support this game say, oh, we got to ignore that now because it's Shenmue. The funny like, thing is everything you just said could also be applied to Death Stranding. Yeah, I guess it could actually. We have a lot of There's whatever funny. defense force going on right yeah. now. Well, I, the thing that I think is weird about the defense force on this game, speaking as someone who in you know an alternate timeline probably is part of that defense force, like if there's one game I think even the fans of acknowledge fully it's not a universal thing. So you know, I think going back 20 years, even when the first game came out, we were, everybody was just like, you should play it. But it's not for everybody. Yeah. You know, it's 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 amazing, like, what they're trying to do, but it's not for everyone. If you're not enthralled by opening capsule toys and playing Hang On, like, while you walk around and pay, check what time it is while you're looking for sailors, like, this is not going to set your world on fire. And it's a little bizarre to me that people are, like, freaking out about people not liking this game when, like, the most... The most reliable prediction I could make about this game is that a lot of people were not going to like it. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to be one of those people, but here we are. I didn't think I would be either. Like, I didn't I didn't expect it to be, like, in my hot list for Game of the Year for 2019 no. or anything. But I like Shenmue. Like, I have been a fan for 20 years. Like, I'll be this honest, isn't like, me, like, someone who has a grudge against Sega or Yu Suzuki no, or but Shenmue. I'll be, but I'll be honest. If you, if, you kill, if you give me an option to turn off the stamina system, I will probably like it just fine. They may get to a place like where... Like, that is my biggest issue, is, like, I feel like I'm being penalized for existing. It's you got to like, wonder. Look, if you're someone who's making games, and maybe... Rio's Rio, Rio a young guy, and his metabolism moves fast, but it ain't that <laughs> fast. Come on. you, you got to imagine. If you're making games, and let's say you ship your first game, and it gets reviewed like every other game, where they take certain things to task that are just accepted as poor implementation or poor gameplay or whatever, or just technical issues... And your game gets hammered for that. And then this game comes out, and all of a sudden, everybody wants to apologize for that crap. Like, what the hell? Like, there's no logic to yeah. me. Like I said, I think, you know, a lot of the stuff, like, it, it, you know, my main problems with the game are the two biggest changes to the game. Not the, fa the fact that it hasn't progressed in 20 years, the fact that they added a useless stamina system that ruins everything about what was fun to play in the old games and the fact that the fighting system can't be Virtua Fighter anymore because it's not Sega, but the thing they replaced it with is a big mushy mess. 
Um, if Someone you, in chat just said you're freaking out because people like it. That's not what I'm. That's not what's happening if, at all. If you fix those two things, I would be pretty much fine with the fact that the presentation is essentially Dreamcast era circa 19, 2002. You know, yeah. Like I would be like, oh, you're just throwing fully back as though not, you're picking up exactly where it left off, as if nothing ever changed. So if you were ever to play these games all together, the presentation style would all sort of flow. My problem is like the two. My you know that's the irony. Is like people are a lot of people are complaining that you know that didn't like it. Like you did or saying like well it's archaic and it's terrible and da, da, da. i'm like i get why it's archaic my problem is that you change things about yeah, it yeah. like i have the opposite complaint i'm like if you just did shenmue 2 again i'd have been fine but the fact that they added this stupid stamina system and all this needles inventory juggling and all this that eventually becomes like i mean are you, anyway. are you basically saying that you expected the game to fall short in a number of areas no i'm ex- i'm saying i expect it to be shenmue 3 like i didn't expect it to be um a modern game basically like i don't know i don't know how else to put the fact that all the presentational stuff is has exactly the same foibles and flaws as shenmue one and two is not a shock to me is is it is of, to me is what in i expected 2019, it to absolutely it is um that is a ch- that is a creative choice i, I still don't believe that i absolutely i don't think there's a way to say it isn't because the unreal engine 4 doesn't cause these things but you had to choose these things i think that's just the only way he knows how to make the game I don't think that it was a conscious I choice. I think when he... It's absolutely a conscious choice. I will bet you anything. Is this a con- There's there, no there way is, it's a conscious choice conscious to make choice. you take off your shoes, load a room, I don't step know what, up on a platform. I don't know what that's on the about. Pla- I mean, that's what I'm talking about, though. These are things about I'm this game ab- that nobody can argue are crap. But I'm talking about, like... No game has that. Just Shenmue 3. And it's not because it's Shenmue. It's because the developers just aren't good enough. They aren't... They don't know how to make a modern I'm talk- video I'm game. Talking about they pre- know how to make Shenmue. Yeah, I get it. I, I've heard it many, many times now. What I'm saying is, presentationally, like the fact that there's like like the sound editing on the dialogue is like someone working on like a too slow VHS dub machine. That's a choice. Like they chose to put the weird pauses between the dialogue in back and forth. Do you think scenes. they intentionally recorded god awful voice acting? They must have because no. it's exactly the same. I don't believe same. it. I don't believe that. The guy who does Rio's voice, if you see him in the in the like the behind the scenes stuff, he talks like a normal human being. Well, yeah, they are, he they has, are, he's playing a character. He's playing. But Rio. they are they are getting these performances intentionally. There is no other I way don't to explain. It. Absolutely, of course it is. I mean, even if you go back. I mean, this is the same dub crew. The, the, I mean, so, he was. I, I don't know about the dub crew on this uh, fully, but the old dub crew for Shenmue 1 and 2 was a, a, an English dubbing service in Japan, mostly made out of, like, you know, people from out, people who came, English speakers from outside of Japan were living in Japan. It's the same dub service that did Iron Chef when that came here. Like, when they switch to the, you know, when they're doing this stuff for Iron Chef and the guy from, like, the floor goes, Goisan, like, and call, jumps in. That's his, like, the guy who lives with them is the other guy you spar with in the first game, like the the, the weird loser kid who mm-hmm. like yeah, yeah, that's the same guy. Like that's and like you listen to Iron Chef, that's this it's just the same sort of quality of 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 VO that's going on. There's a certain sound to it. There's a certain also certain sound. It's related to the sound of anime dubbing, um, which I think has progressed way more than this, obviously. But at the time, was not all that far off of what Shenmue was doing. Um, they are going for that as a style. Um, is that a wise thing to do? Not if you want to sell it to anyone other than who already kickstarted. You already your game. paid for it. Like so, like I was kind of expect. I admit I wasn't expecting like the the dialogue to not match up with itself. Like I think and Jim Sterling even used the clip like that one of that first, first conversations. Where that's wrong. Where you're at, yeah. you're, you're like, I'm looking for you, Mr. Yuen. Yeah, and, he's, and, the, and the other guy says, says, no, I haven't. Yeah, see, that and was not like, on purpose, man. The that game was is not, broken. That was, that was an error, but I'm talking. It's a poor that, job done I'm by ta- the developers. But that's one error. What you I'm know what happens about, all over the time? All the time. Uh, not, th- that happened to me, it, and I only played this game like five hours. That happened to me at least like 35 or 40 times. No, I, it, it happened. Where they may- play the wrong clip. The It happened maybe 30. This is insane. It happened maybe three times. <clears throat> this but is like, insane. And to get back to what someone said in chat about I'm pissed off that someone's enjoying the game, I'm not. I'm glad they, they spent the money on the game and that they feel like they're getting it, what they wanted. I don't know that I necessarily believe it. I think they may have deluded themselves into liking it more than maybe they should. My argument is that people are coming at me and other people who do not like the game and saying we're just flat out wrong when there are... are completely obvious issues with this game that anybody can see. 
That's it. I mean, it. I don't see. If you how, enjoy it, that's fine. I, mean, I, don't, I don't care. Don't see how I'm you, glad you're getting your money's worth. I mean, I don't see how you play this game and not acknowledge that it yeah, is. Yeah, I don't either. And our, I mean, and I do believe, with the exception of obvious errors, like I'm looking for Mr. UN. No, I haven't. Like that's somebody, something got crossed there. But you could say the same thing that assume it's an error that everybody t- sp- like spends two seconds waiting between lines. But that's an obvious choice because that's how the old games were. So now we're doing it again with this one. I don't see how even if you enjoy this game, and it's not like I don't enjoy it when it's like when I don't have to deal with the stupid stamina system. When I'm just like talking to people and like looking at things like that's Shenmue to me. I get it. But I don't understand how you could play that and even if you enjoy it, not think like, yes, yeah, someone who is accustomed to modern games is going to think this is bizarre. Like, it's I because it is. It. it is bizarre. I mean, it was pretty weird at the time, you know? And, but, but it like, was groundbreaking at, at the time, ground, which, let, which to some endeared degree, it to me. I would argue that by the time the Xbox version of Shenmue 2 came out, it was already behind the time. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, they, but, it, look, this, but it was charming. It broke the ground for a lot of franchises to come. Yeah. And I can see, and it was fresh and new when it came out. Now, yeah, I think it's people just, took a lot of not necessarily lessons from Shenmue, but it definitely like gave people ideas, like, oh, I could do that better, and then they did. And they did. Yeah. Um, and like, I kind of appreciate the idea of wanting to make it a complete throwback the way they did, but at the same time, would I argue with playing a version of this game that was done with modern sensibilities? No, I wouldn't argue with that at all. I would play that as well. I'd probably play that better because in that scenario. Maybe they would have made a better stamina system. They like, would have made it a lot of better. They could, they could have made a lot better everything. Everything in this game could be improved drastically. I cannot think of a single thing in this game that was nailed. Can you? The music. Okay. I think the uh, music's very good. Okay. I'll give you that because I actually... That's a, that's a cop-out, though, because music's a totally different animal. Like, I don't like the music in this game. I like the main Shenmue theme because it's literally burned into my brain. And when I'm 80 and dying on my <laughs> bed, I'm going to be, like, whistling it. But the rest of the music, and again, it's subjective, I did not think was good. Like, I didn't find it catchy. I, my wife told me to turn down the TV. <laughs> She's like, I feel like I'm in feudal Japan and someone's about to, like, waterboard me. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'll turn down the music. Like, I did not think the music was good. But, you know, again, music especially is, like, a lot of opinion. So I'm, I'm just going to say I didn't like it. I'm not going to say someone's wrong for, for actually enjoying it. But I cannot think of a single thing this game nails. Not one I mean, it nails Shenmue. <laughs> I guess it kind of does. I mean, I mean, that's it. It is what it is. Like, yeah. there's no, probably no game this year that's more aptly described. Th- and with again, that. I'm totally fine with that. Look, if people, this is what they expected and they got it, I'm really happy for them. But to go at people who are critical of this game and say that they're wrong, that's wrong. Like, <laughs> that's insane. This Wait. game has blatant flaws well, and just myriad flaws. Well, you're having a lot of. I mean, that's happening with Death Stranding. You're right. As well. The same thing is happening with Death Stranding. Lots of people making lots of excuses for Hideo Kojima. And even uh, we got another uh, subject coming up that's a very similar situation. Although it's only one person, right, <laughs> making the complaint. Yeah. Like, it's just sort of. It's like you know. I feel like you're constantly stuck in this thing where like it's like the old. Uh, Penny Arcade strip where they said, like, you know, Kevin Smith said that Jersey Girl isn't doing well with critics because it's not for critics. Right. And they're like, I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> you can't. And, like, then they, uh, that was when... Uh, That's the point. You can't. Tw- it was a Twisp and Catsby showed up. There, there was just, like, these crazy characters. What is that way? Ham. And yeah. they're like, like, I bet you'd like to criticize that, but you can't. It's not for you. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like that's what's happening is here. What's it's happening. like, it's, you know... We got to move on, though. We but, have so many more topics, and we got, yeah. like, 20 minutes. Uh, up next... New PS5 dev kit photos just came out. Did you guys see these? I tweeted them the other day. I saw the stacks of them. With oh, the you saw stacks of them. I didn't see that actually. There's like a stack, like you know, a couple of stacks of which I guess is that's the point is like of that weird design is so you can stack them and they still have air cooling. I missed that photo actually. Wow. Yeah. We have well, we have another one we can put up right now, Jared. So a lot of people. I've seen that one too. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people saw the the patents for this. Some of the weird blurry cell phone photos that mm-hmm. could or could and not the, have been yeah. legit. It's not. It's legit. These are the PlayStation Five dev kits. When this photo first came out, people blew up the display on the right hand side, and they thought that there was some code in there that showed that it was the Demon Souls was being remade. No, that was a that was a joke. Well, as it turns out, it was just the MAC address of the yeah. console. So <laughs> people will look into a lot of things. Um, now that, that was the guy who did that first. It was a joke, and then people just picked it up and. Oh, uh, okay, it. okay. So he knew right away. It he was knew. He knew what it was. Yeah, he knew it wasn't Demon Souls, but uh, he decided to put that on Twitter because he knew people would fall for ah, it. Ah, and they did. 
and ma- fall for a it. Masterful, masterful troll. And for, fall for it. They did uh, the dual shock. Five is sitting there. Yeah. Um, I think you can see. It's, I a can thick, s- it's a thick boy. You can see the differences. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They're not blatant, but you can see it. But it's there. Like, they're a th- it's a thicker controller. And you can tell the sticks are shorter. Uh, it's just beefier, it looks like. Yeah. It looks a little bit more like solid-state Xbox stuff, to be honest. Mm-hmm. It's like maybe they're going to put some more money into their controllers, which is good because... I feel, I feel like it looks like there's a there's a higher a higher ridge on the edges of the D-pad, too. Yep. Yeah, it looks like it, which I'm also all I'm okay for. with. Yeah, it's, it's good. What are you thinking, Matt? Do you think this is what the PS5 is going to look like? Of course not. I don't know, no. man. I'm These really are, starting no, to wonder. I had I had several people, including my brother-in-law, works like to explain, like, this is purely so they can stack them. Really? This is so you can stack a bunch of them, and, they and, never you, and you still have airflow. Interesting. Going I wonder the, the, final, the final version will not look like that. I wonder why they haven't done that with prior dev kits. I don't know. Maybe this one just gets super hot. It might be. Yeah, yeah. I don't. It's probably specific to whatever they're doing here. Don't you um, think it's weird that they patented the dev kit, though? I mean, if they think it's a cool design or it's a, a functional design they designed specifically to handle this, I can see that. It's weird, though, don't you think? It's not going to look like that. I promise. I would hope not. <laughs> I mean, look, it wouldn't keep me from buying it if it did look that no, way. No, well, there's no reason. There's no way you want you try to sell anyone on putting that on their because people like to put things on top of stuff that's already on top of their entertainment center. Thing, whatever. It's going to be a flat top, I promise. It's you. just, it's strange. Like, I've never seen anything like this. Well, where... It's also not going to have a screen on the side, and it's not going to have well, a yeah, slot. I mean, th- these are pure dev kits. I mean, normally you get them in just a little box, but for whatever reason, they decided this time. Yeah, that's to what do I'm wondering. Thing. Like, why? Like, why do you set up a manufacturing line to create that form factor when you can just put it in a PC case? Like, that's so, why I'm having doubts. Sony gonna Sony. I guess. Like, I've never seen anything like this. I've been doing this for a long time, and I've never seen a platform holder do this, which is why, for me, red flags are going up. Red flags of what? Of this could very well be, like, what not the a, Not a chance looks. in hell. This is, this is pure hardware design for what they're doing with a dev kit. Very weird. And completely out of the ordinary. Appar- I agree. Appar- it would, it would apparently, be idiotic not. to release a console. Apparently, not. Like that. According to the people I know who work IT, like this is not a crazy design for this. Well, no, I understand like, what you're saying. Like, if you're trying to cool something and you're going to stack mm-hmm. them, absolutely. And remember, yeah, like, we're not it. even supposed to see these. You know? Yeah. I mean, obviously, we were going to see it because we we pay attention to all the tiny little nerd details. But like, the vast majority of the public's never going to see these things, I, unless somebody on CNN decides it's a slow week. I mean, it's possible. <laughs> I just it's hard for me to understand why they would bother. Making something if for so whatever elaborate. if there's for whatever reason there's a need to have a lot of them or a lot of them stacked then that is a design you would use for that I don't know maybe why they're gonna use them for PlayStation that. now <laughs> I don't know I mean didn't Saddam Hussein buy a bunch of PS2s I mean, they, to launch a missile well, I mean that's not <laughs> that's not entirely impossible if that's like one of the things they're building into it I mean they may have designed it specifically because Sony themselves has a reason they want to stack these things yeah. That's and what not, I said. They're going to use them for blades mis- for PlayStation now. Not impossible. It's really not, actually. That's about the only plausible reason why they would do that. Yeah. Chain them but together. But for whatever reason, they felt the need they they felt the need to have an air cooling solution for these things when you had them all st- on a large number of them stacked together. Yeah, because usually, like, that thing that you see on the right there with the book on top of it, that's normally like yeah, a dev kit. Yeah, no- that's what a normal <laughs> dev kit looks like. Usually. It's very bizarre that they've made them this way. But maybe they're just trying to throw us off the trail or whatever. No, uh, but I, I don't think they're doing this for misinformation i think this is they, whatever they want to use these things for they need that for it that's why it's there okay so i don't know what that means or what they're gonna I mean you might be right about the playstation now thing like that you know that might be their new solution similar to how google stadia wants to run the streaming thing who knows these, Possible. Things, these things are powerful these things are fast. i mean they're super computers like, yeah. again saddam hussein bought a bunch of ps2s to launch a missile and hey, that's a lot, sim- that's a lot simpler that? than building some kind of PS- right. PS5 shell inside an existing PC. But you got to remember, they had like all those sanctions against them, so they yeah. couldn't get like PCs into the country, but they could right. get consumer consoles. They needed so- the emotion engine. Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I just want to show those guys, uh, show those to you guys, just in case you missed them. I did tweet them out, um, but I know a lot of you guys aren't dialed into Twitter all. D- I'm not dialed into Twitter all day every day, so thought you might want to check those out. Uh, I'm flummoxed. Like I think. 80% you're right. Like, there's no way in hell they would put out a console that looks like that. I've no. just never seen this happen before. So no, that's some, making that's me something that, That's a design that belongs in Iraq somewhere. It's not, <laughs> you're right. Yeah. Not not Iraq the country, but right. Iraq, Iraq of servers. Yeah. yeah. As a blade, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Very much. Okay, let's move on. 
I'm going to talk next about a game that kind of came and went without us discussing it all that much. Well, it's not out yet on consoles. Yeah, but I mean, it did come I mean, out That was on what PC. I was thinking I might play this week, and then we could talk about it next week. That's not a bad idea. Because I didn't play it on PC. Yeah, and we're, we're talking about Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey. This was the next game from Patrice Desolé, who mm. left the Assassin's Creed team at Ubisoft to start his own studio. And it is a game where you literally literally play as primates who are in the middle of the, the evolving chain. Um, and it's really about, I guess, evolving from ape to man. Or at mm-hmm. least that's supposed to be the concept behind the game. The game did not get great reviews. It's sitting at a 64 right now on Metacritic, which isn't terrible. I mean, let's be honest. It's not... That's not bottom of the barrel. No, it's, it's kind of Shenmue level, though. But when you're Patrice Desolates and right. you're used to putting out a game that got a nine or higher pretty much every freaking time, it's it's humbling. And that's basically what's been happening happening with Patrice over the last few weeks. His game came out. It didn't review well. It doesn't appear to be selling well, though you're right. It's coming out on consoles here pretty soon, and maybe it'll do a little better on consoles, though I kind of doubt it. But he's lashing out now. Mm-hmm. He's realizing the critical that's reception. That's what I mean. It was, it was one, one, person, yep. <laughs> one person defense force. And that's game. exactly what's been going on. And the excuses that he's been given, he's been giving, providing, for why this game did not review well are insane. So he's basically saying that he believes that journalists didn't play the game. And I have, a bu- I have literally an entire page of wacky quotes didn't, from him. Didn't play the game at all or didn't play it long enough? He thinks both. Some of them didn't play it. Some of them didn't play it long enough, period. I, I find that hard to believe. I mean, long enough, okay, but it's like I, I guarantee you they put at least like 15 hours into the thing. And if you haven't grabbed me in 15 hours, you are Final Fantasy thirteen, and you are bad. Here's, here's the quote from Patrice. I'm not going to read all of them, but I'm going to read like the ones that we're going to discuss. Um, I'm used to having bigger numbers than that, so it's the elephant in the room. Um, but people expected my studio of 35 people to ship a game that is really close to Assassin's Creed, and it's just not possible. We made some harsh de- decisions in order to ship the game, and we wanted it to be different. We know for a fact, listen to this, we know for a fact that some reviewers actually didn't play the game. <coughs> it is part of our industry. They have to review games, and they have 15 of them to review in one week. (laughs) What week was that? (laughs) And sometimes they don't have time. And since Ancestors is so different, some of them went, erg, I don't have time for this. (laughs) Then he goes further. Um, Desolets went further, suggesting some reviewers, quote, just invented some elements, unquote, of their reviews, too. And insisted that the game's concept alone needs an hour, maybe two, to be understood. And we know for a fact that some just invented some elements of the game. Like there is no fire and you cannot ride any horses, even though one reviewer said, Oh, it wasn't that great when you ride a horse. (laughs) What? (laughs) It's insane. (laughs) Yes, my people are pissed, by the way, he added. So please don't take notes today as we talk, mainly because I don't know how to make a video game. What the hell is he talking about? Dude, he's lost his mind. Nobody ever reviews 15 games in a week. No. Well, also, like, if you were going to review 15 games a week and you knew you had no time for all of them and you had to, like, pick a few to not play and make up a review about... Why would the one you pick to skip playing be the weirdest one? Yeah, like, no. why would it be the one that you know you couldn't make? Sh- you I mean, couldn't it's make like, up stuff about. Like, you, you would could, have no you idea. You could theoretically skip like playing a lot of like the new Tales of games, right, right? And just sort of like turn in the generic Whip, anime yeah, JRPG <laughs> review and sort of probably pass it. But the game where no one really knows how it works and can't figure out what you're supposed to do and now you're supposed to play an like. This is the one game in that 15-game lineup in Fantasy World where you would definitely play this one because you knew you had to talk about the weird thing. Yeah. Now, when he says it's a part of our industry, that is a thousand percent incorrect. Like for, you're gonna have to, today. Like you're gonna say stuff like that. You gotta start naming names. Now, I will frankly. say this: back, like the GameCube, PS2 era, there were a couple magazines that were caught reviewing games without playing them. Mm-hmm. That was a long oh, yeah. time ago. I so, mean, hell, not, when I got into the industry, I was shocked to find out that people didn't finish them before they were. Yeah, well, I mean, every place I've worked, that was a mandate. 
That's why we don't have. That's why I haven't written a lot of gamey vows over the last couple of weeks. I'm trying to finish the games. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to write a gamey vow based on the first ten or fifteen hours. I mean, of when the I game. complained about that early on, I was basically told, "Well, we pay like 150 bucks a review, and you can't have someone play a hundred hour game for 150 bucks. So you're just going to have to deal with it." No, so you like, can, okay. and they do. And if they don't, you'll find somebody else who will do it because there are thousands of people waiting in line mm-hmm. to do it. Like that's a biggest cop out BS ever. But for Patrice. But that was say, pretty much how it worked till you got there. Really? That's the way it was at Tech TV before I got there? For a there? couple of things. Really? Yeah. Like, that, like Shenmue. Was it Shenmue? It was some RPG. Not Shenmue. Um, uh, Suikoden. Well, see, but no, I, I, I reviewed Suikoden 3, and I did finish. I mean, my, one of the first reviews I ever did there was Ogre Battle 64, and I barely got it done on time because I finished it. Oh, that thing was a beast. It was endless. Beast. Endless. Yeah. Person of lordly caliber. Talk about a game that's bloated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, But then I, it wasn't until, like, months later. I'm like, I mean, and part of it was me just being like, I finished Ogre Battle 64. You fuckers have got to finish everything. <laughs> like it was, it was a bit, but that was our freelancers. Is like, like It wasn't expected to get more than, like, 30 or 40 hours in sometimes. Yeah, well, I expected them to finish the games. Yeah, that I definitely gave, changed. I gave the work there. to somebody else. That's just the way it is. And the truth of the matter is there are dozens of people waiting to get that work. So some people are like, I don't want to spend X number of hours to make money, you know, playing video games. Some people will say, I get paid to play a video game. It, it's all about perspective and where you are. So um, what do you think about this, Matt? <laughs> I love Patrice, by the way. I, oh, yeah. I mean, I've hung out with him countless times. I've interviewed him dozens of times. He's a great dude. He's very talented. Oh yeah, but uh, so but he has lost his mind. Yeah, this is. I don't. I if if he really does have some kind of like evidence of this, like I'd like to see. Yeah, it. you can't throw stuff like that out there without evidence, man. You can't just like indict an entire industry and say that's the way it is. People don't play the games; they just make up the reviews, like. He knows that's BS. Like, he knows it. He's been in the industry so long. Like, And it's just like, you make a game like this, you're taking a risk that people are not going to take to it. It's basically. like you, you make you make an ape, and he's supposed to, like, break up rocks, and you give him the same animation every time he does. Like, that's what we're talking about. That's why this game... And if you die, re- you basically get reset. Yeah. And, like, like it's... I mean, I haven't played it, but I've read. I read the reviews of the PC version, and like, it didn't sound very fun. No. Um, and here's another thing I, mean, I would I'd argue. I'd play it just to have something to talk about next week. Right. And, you know. Here's the other thing I would argue too is that if you're talking about the people who have been reviewing games for a long time, this is the type of game they play yeah. because it's different and it's not the same thing they've been playing for the last 25 years. I think that's the biggest issue that I have with connecting with younger audiences. I'll be perfectly honest. It's because I've been playing these games for so long that stuff that may be new to a 12 or 13 year old is just completely blase to me. And I think that's something you have to consciously consider when you're evaluating games is, you know what? Maybe I'm starting to get a little jaded towards something and I need to recognize that and maybe try to dial it back if I can. But that's not the case with this game. Any veteran games journalist, I guarantee you, was excited to boot this game up. Guaranteed. It's, at the end of the day, they didn't think the game was very good. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Like, accept the truth and learn from it and move on or just move on. Like, trying to throw the blame for your product's failure on the people who reviewed it is ludicrous, in my opinion. And And that has, and this, by the way, has nothing to do with whether the game is good or bad or not. Like, I don't know. I haven't really played mm-hmm. it. So, but it's irrelevant to what he Take said. Take it did. to heart and maybe do what Hello Games did. Right. Take it to heart and just go and, and double down and be like, okay, like, I hear you. I mean, Hello Games has the advantage that their game sold very well. Right, right. Yeah. And so, this one doesn't appear to have sold I mean, sold this one has well almost no hype behind it at all. Like, you know, it's not, there's no marketing. There's, there's no, no marketing. I mean, like, it's. Like, but, I don't know how the word is going to get out about this. Also, those apes look like they're made of clay. They do. But, um, didn't Deep Silver publish this as well? I think okay. it did. Okay. And if that's the case, this two games. What a, what a, that's what a Shenmue. bundle with Shenmue 3 this would make. That's what I'm saying, though. Like, maybe people should stop working with Deep Silver because they're not marketing their games. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm, look, I know that that was probably a part of the deal was like, we'll give you X amount of dollars for marketing if you sign up with us. So, look, they probably knew going in, like, what marketing they were or were not going to get. But, man, at this point, Deep uh, Silver published... Chat saying it's private division. Oh, wait. Ancestors is private division? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's 2K then, or take two. Yeah. But it got no marketing either. 
And Private Division put out The Outer Worlds. Have you seen a lot of TV commercials for that? Yeah, I saw a couple. Yeah, I've seen a few. Yeah. But none for this, that's for sure. And I haven't seen any marketing whatsoever for Shenmue 3. None. No, I haven't seen any. I haven't seen, like, ads on websites for Shenmue 3. Yeah, I haven't even seen, like, a bus stop. No, let alone a TV commercial. Oh, God, imagine if they actually put the money into that. But then it would be worse because then all these people would buy the game and they'd be like, what? What is this? Maybe they actually did it right. But, look, I love Patrice. Great dude. Crazy talented. He's way off the reservation on this one. Sometimes you just have to take the L. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Like, I'm not going to blame anybody else for the problems mm. that Sifted has had. It's, At the same time, it's me. It, like, it, maybe before he na- makes another game like this, he should consider changing his name to Hideo Kojima. <laughs> maybe people would accept it more. Yes. You might have people actually Absolutely. like to, Imagine if Kojima made this game. There are people standing around saying that the, the Fetch Quest game where you have to keep your balance more often than any other gameplay element is the best thing they've played all decade. Wow. So, uh, I being, don't know how you review games for people like that. Being named, <laughs> how do you review a know, game? <laughs> being named Hideo Kojima gets you a huge pass on incredibly oh, yeah. mundane things. We've so known that. We've done that for a long time. If you're going to make a weird game like that, just change your name to Kojima. Be good. <laughs> or just have Kojima Productions publish Yeah, have it. him call it a Hideo Kojima game, and it'll be genius <laughs> automatically. And then he'll have to have his name 85 times in the first two minutes in the opening I mean, sequence. I did go back and play a little more Death Stranding this week, which did is more you? than I can say about Shenmue 3. I ended up taking a, a mission that I didn't realize wanted to load me down with 500 kilograms of boxes, and I had to, like, go steal a truck and, like, bring it back and load it. <laughs> and the truck couldn't carry as much as I needed, so I had to, like, make two trips back and forth and like good times and by the end of like that delivery it had been like an hour i played like an hour i'm like now i have to stop and i want to stop and i want to stop yeah (laughs) i did build another road though i do like i do love building maybe someday i'll drive on that road yeah and i'll make sure i honk as i yeah honk and i'll get a like (laughs) (laughs) oh man all right, we got to move on. We got a couple more topics still to get in before we get we run out of show time. Uh, next up, next couple topics are VR actually, mm-hmm. um, and one kind of leads into the other, which is why they're stacked in the way that they are. Um, it was announced, well, not announced, but Phil Spencer said this week that uh, Xbox Scarlet VR, no way. I mean, that's the Crib Notes version. <laughs> that's me, like, disseminating it down to, like, a few words. His exact quote was, or quotes were, I have some issues with VR. It's isolating, and I think of games as a communal kind of together experience. I don't know where he's been gaming. We're responding to what our customers are asking for, and nobody's asking for VR. Nobody's selling millions and millions of VR units, he said. I think we might get there eventually, but yeah, that's not where our focus is. Smart or not to completely ignore VR with the next Xbox? Probably smart. You think it's smart? Like financially smart. Yeah, they got a, other people are dealing with that. And uh, honestly, Microsoft has enough ground to make up as it is, and I don't think VR is going to put them over that edge. So yeah, I think uh, focus on what the proven stuff, focus, focus on what works, focus on diversifying your portfolio, and don't worry about the current new tech gimmick. Here's what I would say. I would say absolutely do not develop your own VR HMD. Do not spend the money on R&D, manufacturing, marketing, all that other crap, but just make it compatible with Vive and Rift. That's it. That's all you have to do. Let them handle all the rest of it. Like I don't think that's how that works, though. Like certainly not Vive. Like Vive basically makes the headset and says, "Have fun." Like yeah. you have to. Do, someone has to do that on their end, on the software end. So I don't think that's a viable thing. Um, I'm sure. Like I would say, like keep keep up with it. Like keep on. You know, have have some people paying attention to things. So if it becomes a thing that you would need to move on, you are agile enough to move on it. But right now, it's just irrelevant to the equation. But I mean, look, I, I agree. Like financially, it would be really stupid. But it's no, it's not going to be any different than a PC. Like, why can I buy a Vive and a Rift for my PC and just plug it in and it works? Because someone like specifically made sure that that stuff is built for that in Steam VR for Windows. Or in- or in Steam, no, no, in Steam VR, in like there, there are specifically curated platforms that deal with that. Like, there's no way you're going to be able to just not work on it for VR. Like, you can't like just you don't make have it to run have in Steam VR. To use Oculus Rift, 
No, but Oculus also has its own store and also had its own platform. Like, the, like you, you have to spend the time and money and dev energy to make them compatible with these headsets. Unless- but you, look, you can still let them run their store on Xbox Two or Scarlet, whatever the hell you call it. You just take a little bit of a cut every time they sell a game. Is there a storefront shows up there? Like, well, Vive isn't even a thing though. Like, it's just, they just make the headset. They don't have a store. They don't have a right. setup. They don't have anything like that. So you're talking about Valve. Or Oculus, and both of those companies are going to want to do their own okay, thing. Okay, so let's take Vive off the table. Let's just talk about Oculus. Like Oculus has why? No, it, why does it not work with Oculus? Why? Because Oculus wants their own platform and own store, and their move right now is to make the. System, but you still have to move. buy their platform. You still have to buy the. Rift. But they don't want that. Oculus wants a self-contained platform. That's why they're moving towards like these things that don't even need PCs. That's what Oculus's focus is now. They don't want to partner with that. Well, they just launched Rift S on the same day they launched Quest. Yeah. So they haven't given up. They're on... not giving up on it, but that's not the end goal, and it doesn't give them do them any favors to team up with the Xbox for that. And also, it doesn't why, seem though? like Xbox. All they care about selling software and, and hardware no they want you in their environment like and, and partnering with xbox doesn't get you there but it would they, though you can just pop up their storefront on your xbox it's not it's not part of their strategy and it's not something that microsoft cares about so there's no way that happens well that's really dumb on oculus's part i really don't think really it is. really stupid well, to I mean, not sell your hardware and software to as many people as possible well making a whole xbox version of the thing is just not that's not a, that's not a thing like it is a thing it's not as simple as you think it is it's it really just isn't. a PC. That's all it is. That's all X, more, the next well, Xbox is. There's more to it than that. Like, but, like, but like no, what? There's a new OS. That you're talking about a, a limitation on memory. I mean, it's memory. just Windows. Ta- it's, not this, it's not just Windows. It's different. Like, uh, like VR development is not as simple as you seem to think it is. Like, it's, 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 I'm not talking about VR development. I'm talking about it just also running t- on a PC. I am also talking about that because to get that to even function, it has to be have development in terms of the VR because everything is done through the VR headset. Like... It's not some kind of weird plug and play thing like you suggest it is. It it's a lot of work and it's something that apparently Microsoft doesn't want to do and I guess Oculus Oculus's goal here is to put you in that Facebook environment and have you owned it's by still, Facebook. But it still happens. You still can use no, all the Facebook you're, stuff on you're, Xbox. Yeah, but they don't want you in someone else's ecosystem. They want you in their ecosystem. You're saying Xbox doesn't want people going to Facebook. No, I say Facebook doesn't want you in the Xbox ecosystem. They That's want you, crazy. Maybe, but they've spent tons of money on Oculus to make it be that. Like that's their goal. That's their end goal. You're still going to be there, though. You're still. They gonna don't be want in their anyone else involved. I that's mean, they're going to fail there. Probably. I mean, that's idiotic. That makes no sense. That's what Facebook's doing, though. They want it's it to really be self. They want to be self-contained. They don't want to well, build, rely look, on other anyone else. I to feel like, their though, platform. if that were the case, he probably would have said it's not even on the table because Oculus and doesn't work with us, and Vive doesn't even have a platform. Like that's not what he said. Well, I don't think he wants to throw other companies like that under the bus because maybe one day it will be. And then they can say, because like you say, Oculus might fail, and then maybe Oculus wants to partner, but they don't want to partner with Microsoft because that guy talked bad about them back in the day. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I. I think Microsoft should work with Rift, and I don't think they Rift can. Should work Oculus on Xbox. has no interest. I don't think Oculus has any interest in that. They if want to be the their case, own platform. If that's the case, fair enough. If it's not the case, Microsoft is making a mistake not working with Rift. That's my. Opinion. I guarantee you, Oculus has no interest in it. That is not what their goal is right that's now. That's really stupid. But that's what the, I mean. Facebook being stupid, never. Like, I mean, <laughs> it's, look at what they're doing right now. They're run by crazy people. So. Yeah, it does appear that way. For sure. I don't disagree that it's stupid that they don't want to partner with anyone, but that is what, I mean, Oculus I mean, that's is, how you're going to succeed. That's getting, not how they think so. Getting these people who love video games already, like. They think they can do it themselves. That's so dumb. It's dumb. You can't do anything yourself. You'll learn that very quickly if you run your own business. You need help with everything. I mean, when your business is worth billions upon billions upon billions of dollars, it's probably pretty easy to convince yourself that you don't. Yeah, do you're right. Else. Yeah. If you could never spend but the I don't amount see, of money you're But even with. after all these years, I don't see Oculus being kind of any cr- kind of critical mass. So, you know. But this is, but that's what I'm saying. Like, this is <laughs> the type of thing you need to do to get but there. But if Microsoft's not interested in supporting VR in general, like, Oculus partnering with them wouldn't do Oculus any good. Like, it's not a focus, so why would you buy? Well, it would do me good because if you could actually get Oculus to run on the next Xbox, I don't have to buy a $1,500 PC to, to buy a Rift. Well, the so you're I, opening well, that's up. Not what, that's See, not that's what, the other thing about VR. That's is not there's what a Oculus major stumbling do. block, though, because most the average person doesn't use a PC anymore. Nobody has PCs except Oculus, for like you and I. The Oculus knows that. And gamers. O- that's, that's their whole strategy, though. 
That's they want to sell things like the Quest that are self-contained. No, I, I that's get their, that. That's their idea. Yeah, but they don't want to have to have it attached to someone else's video game console. But it's better than not having the option at all. Is what I'm getting at. Nobody, not according to them. Ninety-nine percent of people are never going to build a fifteen hundred dollar or more PC well, they to don't play want you VR. To, they but don't, if you already have this console lying around, then yeah. But that's then all not of a sudden what you the, just have to buy the HMD, and then you're buying the gate. You buy the HMD, then you're in the ecosystem. You're buying the games. Rift is making money off all of it. Like, but that's not what Oculus wants. What does it want? It wants you to buy a self-contained headset eventually. Like they don't want you to be attached to some other computer well or nobody some other wants console. vr this wire but let's just be honest it's we're still like 10 years away from like, that's not what oculus thinks really I, I think oculus thinks like the quest is like step one and like step two is coming next year or the year after and that's going to be what v, self-contained uh, vr is i don't know if they think that i, I mean they'd that, be again I they'd be really stupid to i think, think that. they they either think that or they think that that is what they can convince the consumers of Hmm. That's what they're after. That's why those void those void experience places exist and all that to kind of like push you into that idea. What are those void experiences? Those are Oculus Quests. Those I don't even the, know what you're talking about. The void it's like those VR experiences, like the Avengers Never heard thing. Of it. You go in and you strap on what is effectively a Qzar vest, kind of on your thing. It's got like you know, it's, it's like that. You remember those the haptic feedback? Yeah, the yeah. vest that punched you in the yeah. chest. When you got, it's one of those. Okay. And then you put a like a modified Oculus Quest on. And you go in, and there's a Star Wars one, and a Ghostbusters one, and an Avengers one. And basically, you go in. It's a VR experience where you're shooting at things. But is it like, laser tag? But virtual? No, laser tag? it's it's a VR game. Oh, okay. It's like for like t- two to four players. But what it is is you go in this area, and everything in the area is an exact replica of what's in the VR thing. So if there's a handrail in the VR thing, you it's reach there. out and you touch it. Yeah. Um, so that's what those are. But they're all it's Oculus Quest powered by Oculus Quest everywhere on things. Cause well, you the, have to because thing. you can't use one of those mobile agents. Right. Indeed. I mean, you are wearing like you're wearing like 15 pounds of stuff, yeah, but yeah. like you, it, it is functional more or less. And that's where they, you know, they want like another, you know, it's and it is old tech already. Like you, you put it on, it's clearly last the previous version of things. You yeah. can't see anybody's face clearly. You know, the screen door effect is massive. Yeah. Like even by like you know modern tech, but it's just like that's where they're going. That's where they want it to be. They want it. They don't want to be attached to another console or another person a or a PC or anything like that. They want it to be. You grab this thing, you put it on your head, and you're in Facebook. Like that's the that's the goal. I, mean, I think everybody thinks that's the goal. I think realistically, that yeah, but Facebook is going to be a long time right. until. I mean, I agree with that, but that's not what Facebook. You're never going to get Facebook to agree with that because that's not what their corporate angle is. Like the people who think that the self-driving car is five years away. That the self-driving car is thirty to forty years away. But try telling Tesla that. Yeah. You know, like, it, like that's not what they're, you know, it's almost a cult mentality. Like, if you don't believe this, why are you working here kind of thing? And yeah. I think Facebook has that same feeling towards the Oculus right now to the point that they certainly don't feel they need anyone else. And they certainly, certainly don't feel they need Microsoft, of all people, who is sort of to a, to a social media company going to be the epitome of old clunky tech. Hmm. You know, like, I, I don't think they have a positive view of, of that company in terms of just sort of what it represents to people, which I think is wrong. But I don't think that cha- being wrong doesn't change that that's how I think Facebook thinks about it. Okay. All right. We got to move on to our last topic, which is also VR related. Uh, we've been talking about Half Life Alex for the last couple weeks on the show. First, it was kind of a rumor. And then last week, we got the debut trailer. We were both pretty impressed with it. I think me more than you. Um, but it looks like a lot of people were impressed with it because the Valve Index has now sold out in North America and Canada, and is on back order. And they don't know when they're going to have more. Well, I always said, if you want to sell VR headsets, give it an exclusive Half-Life game. And it appears to be... I mean, I meant Half-Life 3, but apparently this worked too. (laughs) Apparently this is good enough for a lot of people. Just going back to Half-Life is close enough for for anybody, I guess. Yeah. Do you think this is like a flash in the pan, and that it's just... X millions of numbers of Half-Life fans who are like, you know what? Like I've well, said would, all along, I would pay anything to play it. I Half-Life. wouldn't even say millions or I whatever say, there are. Yeah. You know, I mean, who knows how many of these things they had, right? I mean, there could be 10,000. So that's my 10, question. 000, you know, do you like, think that it's a lot of people buying them or do you think that like they only had 20,000? And I think it's probably closer to the latter. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, that's a lot for VR. It like is, it's, yeah. I mean, a lot is a, 
is a subjective thing. Like, you know, who knows what Valve's ex- expectations for numbers sold of these headsets is going to be. But, I mean, that is a substantial investment. These are not cheap. These are not, like, you know, Oculus Quest level pricing. This nope. is, like, double that. Oh, this is the full Monty. Yeah. This is so premium. The fact that, VR. I mean, it shows the power of Half-Life, the, of, the, of the IP, even all these, you know, 15 years on. It is crazy to think about. Um, almost like you should have kept making them. Yeah. <laughs> no um, figure. Mm. It's like you're leaving money on the table or something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it doesn't super surprise me. I'd be interested to see when they restock, like because clearly they're gonna have to restock yeah, before yeah. the game comes out. They got like what three and a half months. Yeah. Um, four months. So they uh, yeah. like March twentieth or something. Yeah. Like yeah. That? Four yeah. Months. Um, be interested to see if they remain in stock or if they sell out again. The instant they put more up. They said they don't have any idea when they're gonna have more. I believe. I mean, I think they got to produce them. I mean, yeah. I, I would guess you're going to get, like, the, I would say maybe late February. Because you figure they probably produce, what, like 50,000 of those for a launch? I mean, that seems like a pretty safe yeah. thing. So whatever's left from yeah. that. I mean, I don't know what their launch numbers were, but, like, I feel like we probably, just in how manufacturing works and sort of you're running into the Chinese New Year thing, I don't know. If you're lucky, like, late February uh, goes just up and starts the shipping. Just in the nick of time. Basically, you're going to come down to the wire on this thing, I think. I mean, Honestly, if they I mean, were smart, on anything, if so. they're smart, hell, this might sell some Oculuses, frankly. It, they might, but think about that. If you're smart, maybe you hold it like all that stock right until the end. And people are still like, oh, my God, it's coming out in like a month. And then all of a sudden you're like, boom, here's 150K units just gone out work, the door. Work for the N64. Right. Like, I mean, there's a strategy and a psychology to managing your products that yeah. way. And Valve Smart, as we all know, I wouldn't be surprised if something like that happens where it's like, we don't have any more. We don't have any more. And then, like, literally the month before Alex comes out, they're like, here they are. Although. And then it becomes, like, I mean, this I, thing. just the time it takes to produce something, it's going to end up like that anyway. Like, that's that's just, they don't, they're not going to have a, it's not, they're not going to do some weird, sketchy, like, we're going to hold it back and pretend there's a shortage. And then, oh, here it is. Like, that's not going to happen because this is how many weeks it takes to get something like that mass produced. Yeah. Um, especially with the holidays in place. Uh, because the one thing you really don't want to risk is not getting these things to people after they've ordered them in time to play the game. So I don't think there'll be too much tomfoolery in that regard. I think I think it's just they're going to scramble. They're going to scramble to get s- sufficient numbers available in time for this game to come out. So the last thing you want to do is disappoint people and push them into buying the competitors' headsets. Okay, it's time for our trailer of the week, people. Just I'll- like the rest of the game stuff this week, it was a terrible week for trailers. It's just been a terrible week. It's so yeah. weird to have, like, the last week of November, the first week of December, be so dead. Well, that's because Thanksgiving's so late this it's year. It's just crazy. It's hard to believe. But anyway, we do have one good trailer. No um, reason to put anything out Black Friday week. Yeah. So a lot of the talk in the industry is about microtransactions, DLC, season passes. It tends to get people all pissed off. Um, and certainly Activision with Call of Duty has been guilty of those practices just as much as any other publisher. But with Call of Duty Modern Warfare, I sound like a TV commercial for some reason, They all the DLC is free. Season 1 launched today, and it's all free. All new maps, well, you'll see, because it's our trailer of the week. Let's roll it. Short and sweet, which is perfect because we are out of time. Hmm. (laughs) I'm glad that was only about 30 seconds long. Uh, We're not going to have a lot of time to get to questions today, unfortunately, folks. We're going to answer a couple, uh, but we're already at the 4 o'clock mark for us here on the West Coast. We need to get out of here. Before we do answer a couple questions, as always, go at Sifted Games in the chat. We'll try to pick the two best. Uh, JReadVix7, thank you for subscribing via Twitch Prime. Um, Texture Glitch, thank you. Chevelle Man, 1979, thank you. You guys are awesome. We really appreciate it. Uh, here's a question from J. Reed Vic 7 We haven't answered one of his for a while, actually. Uh, it seems like The Outer Worlds had and continues to be having a moment in terms of driving conversation. Why was it able to achieve this when Tomb Raider, Hitman, Deus Ex, etc. haven't been able to do it? 
Well, um, he's saying basically, what is it? A, what is the secret sauce with the Outer Worlds that made it resonate more than those other games? Well, I think it's because, and I've uh, I've talked about this with some other people recently about um, the idea of Skyrim and like you know why Skyrim still sells and why you know and the answer is there is no replacement for Skyrim. Like if you if someone loves Skyrim. They have to play Skyrim. And you're like, well, well, what should I play if I love Skyrim? I'm like, Skyrim. Morrowind. Nothing else, like, like, nothing else oh, yeah. has come out since Skyrim that really scratches the same itch. But in terms of the Outer Worlds, it's like, hey, have you been disappointed by Fallout 3 and 4? Or do Fallout you, 76. Do you, or certainly Fallout 76. Yeah. Do, you, do you miss uh, the quality of New Vegas? Here it is. I mean, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's the closest thing. Like, it's, it, I mean, it's by the same people. It's by Obsidian. But, like... I think it's just the fact that here's this thing that like feels like a natural continuation of what you liked about the old about Fallout New Vegas, uh, and it's rough in places, and it feels like the first entry in a series for sure. But it also feels very derivative of Fallout to the point that it's kind of familiar. looks like it, but it's kind of like yeah. warmly familiar in that regard. Yeah. So I think I think it just strikes the right notes. I think it was Obsidian was just really smart. It may, it one it knows that its its name has cachet with that <laughs> fan base, and number two, it made the game look exactly like Fallout, like. Mm. It made a very derivative looking game where people a lot of people derivative is Fallout Four. I think Fallout Four is way more less interesting to look at. But it's it's derivative of Fallout Four though. Like it it tries to look like Fallout Four. I don't agree with that at all. Really? Not at all. Because Fallout my 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 prime say that. My prime if I because if I can finish my sentence, my primary memory of Fallout Four's look is gray. Like, I don't associate gray with Outer Worlds. Outer Worlds is colorful and crazy. Outer Worlds takes more from the surrounding artwork of Fallout than it does from Fallout 4. I, I, it's, I, a cra- it's a mash. That's what I was getting at, it's though. A, is it's a mashup six is more of, colorful. of Fallout and Bioshock. And I think you have people who maybe like one of those <laughs> or all of them or some of them. They look at that game and it looks like other games. It looks familiar. And you're right. It's not an exact rip of Fallout. It's not an exact rip of Bioshock. It looks kind of like all those games. And I think when when the layman looks at it, they're like, I recognize that. That looks familiar to me. Obsidian? Wait, they make good RPGs, right? Like, I think all of that came together to make it. And I don't even know how successful it I is think yet. It catches let's the... just let's pump the brakes a little bit. We don't know how well it's sold yet. Yeah, I don't know about that. But yeah. I, think, I think it catches the eye better than... Um than any of the recent Fallouts, except maybe Fallout 76. Fallout 76 is a more colorful game than 4 and 3 were. The other thing is I think it helps, and I didn't notice this until I was in a Best Buy physically this weekend. Um, the Outer Worlds, the, the cover's colorful, but the Outer Worlds title on the cover is a gold foil, a raised gold gold foil, mm-hmm. and for whatever reason that pops on the shelf. It catches the light. Helps. Absolutely. Little stuff like that matters. And believe me, there's people yeah, who package get... package design matters. There are people who get paid very, very well to do that stuff. Uh, Tomb Raiders 11 with RE3 remake being leaked on PSN. Oh, I didn't see that. That must have happened while we were doing the show. Mm. It raises a question of how soon this game might be coming out. Is an early 2020 or even January 2020 release date possible? Yes. Yeah, certainly yeah, possible. Absolutely. I mean, unlikely for January 2020 because I think they're going to want to get a little bit more pre-promotion. Yeah, but I but I do feel like if you're making that, like you probably started making that when as soon as you saw Resident Evil 2 was shaping up the way it was. Oh, I think before that. I, I think they like, knew... Oh, when it was shaping up. So like, it was yeah, in when you're still working yeah, on Resident Evil yeah. 2 and you start to see how Resident you're Evil like, 2 oh, is like coming minute. together, this, you're like, oh, something. We be- let's yeah. just, just in case this thing hits the way it looks like it should hit, let's just get Resident Evil 3 sort yeah. of in the pipeline. And if it doesn't work, we can kill it. But if it does hit, we got it ready to go. Because like, I feel like a late January sort of traditional Resident Evil release date, I can get behind that, like, yeah. a, like a yearly tradition. I wouldn't be surprised if it's out by next March. I'll put it to you that way. Yeah, I, I, I don't think this fiscal is at all unrealistic. Neither. One more. Because we got to go. Oh, Commander Fett 03. What has been your favorite publisher from the last decade? Sony. Sony? Sony's first party stuff. Who? If you want to go, like, a, you know, outside the line, outside of first party stuff, I would probably say Ubisoft. That's tough. Between, oh, man, Nintendo and Sony, that's a tough choice for me. It's not a tough choice for me at all. So. Yeah, I get that. I understand. If you look at my top five, it's all story-driven cinematic AAA experiences yep. pretty much. So Totally like. get it. For me, it's tough, though. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I'd have to say Sony PlayStation. Yeah. Even though I, you know, 
Because it's not like the gameplay sucks in those games. No, no. <laughs> but you're right. They do have more of a focus on that than Nintendo's games. I think Sony's games are more well-rounded, I think yeah. is the best way to put it. And so I'd have to side with them. Third Although party, I would really like to see if Nintendo were willing to take their output in the direction of Lu- Luigi's Mansion 3. Right. Because I felt like Luigi's Mansion 3, while it's still gameplay-focused, it... It, it was inching in the right direction. It inches in that direction of like story tell, storytelling and sort of like character animation and sort of like presentation that I feel like it felt almost Sony-ish at it times did. in the detail and, in, and care and attention to detail they had in that game. And I'd like to see Nintendo continue to move in that direction. That would be interesting to see. Agreed. That's it, folks. We got to go. We're already way over time. I thought the show was going to be like 90 minutes. I'm not even kidding. Like, I was like, yeah. oh, my God, this show is going to be like an hour long. People are going to freak have out. You, have you met us? <laughs> yeah, we can really talk. <laughs> uh, a reminder for those of you who weren't here at the beginning of the show and you're here on the stream now, uh, we're not 100% sure we're doing Game Face on Tuesday of next week. We're having problems finding a TriCaster TD for the show. But follow us on Twitter at Sifted Games. Follow Matt at, at M. Kyle. Follow me at Dinfire, by the way. Um, and we'll keep you up to date on what's happening with Game Face. Also, there is a thread in our forums on Sifted.net that you can follow there, and you'll always know what's going on with Game Face. We're going to try to make it happen on Tuesday. We can't promise anything. We're going to do our best. So, again, hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving, a healthy and happy Thanksgiving. Uh, We'll see you here maybe Tuesday, maybe not, but definitely next week. Game Face is up and out.